Hey, Chris, how are you doing? I'm good, Alan. How are you? Very well, thanks. Thanks for all your work uh, today on uh, those items. Yeah, there was. I I didn't have all I didn't have all the information in the the petition from ever source had some conflicting information. So I actually ended up talking to Vanessa before, um, later. She called me because I she was sensing I was confused about something. So I we, I knew it later, but um, but yeah. Thank you for that. Hello, people. I'm back. Hi, Hi Pete. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Doing okay. I had a very hard troubleshooting call just a little while ago. Do we dare ask? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's, it's going to make you. you fix uh, I fixed it. So I got onto the system and I, I said, wow, I, I can't reach the system. Uh, is it on? Oh, wait, let me check. Huh. No, it's not on. <laughs> it wasn't turned on. You hear about those, but I experienced a real life one. Uh, it, it always pays to ask, is it plugged in before you troubleshoot <laughs> anything else? And, you know, I always thought that it was just a, a wise tale, but you know what? <laughs> I guess it's true. Well, when in doubt, the word is reboot, isn't it? That's reboot. That's so. true, um, if you can. Yep, when in doubt, start with a level playing field. I see seven from the Harbor Commission. How about uh, uh, Mr. Bartish, how many do you expect tonight? Um, don't know how many to expect, but we have two so far. Pete's also on. You and Pete, right? Yep, so far. Yeah, yeah.
Chairman Bartish, are you uh, okay if I uh, call the meeting to order? Yes, please, sir. I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a special uh, joint meeting of the NOAA Copper Management Commission and the NOAA Shellfish Commission. Uh, it's a, a, really a one agenda item tonight. Uh, it's uh, regarding the Siting Council petition number 1560 for the uh, uh, Eversource's uh, work on the, uh, the Walk Bridge. Um, pledge of Allegiance, uh, Bruce has the flag. Uh, Chris, do you want to do the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands, one, nation, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty justice, and justice for, for all. all. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'll read the road we'll call. We could all uh, say here or, or not. Uh, Matt Gifford, not present yet. Lori Jones. Here. Alan Kibbe, here. Chris McDonald. Here. Chris? Present, yes, hello, here. Chris is, Chris is here. Uh, here Jeff me? Mangles. Present. Now. I am here. Jeff Mangles. Mike Matthews. Here. Dr. Pinto. Here. Mr. S Mr. Santella, I do not see as yet. He wasn't planning on attending. Ah, okay. Mm. I hoped he would. Uh, Chairman Bartish. Aye. Pete Johnson. All right. Yeah. Here. Nick Saccinelli. Jordan Sachs, and Jonathan Pegler. They may, may join us. We have a quorum for the Harbor Commission, and not for shellfish, is that correct? Correct. I don't know how that works for a joint meeting though, Alan. I think we should, uh, we should move ahead. I'm just going to set the scene a little bit for this. This is uh, we're, we're talking about the uh, Eversource uh, relocation of power lines for the for the Walk Bridge. This is goes back to at least 2016. Um, we've, as a Harbor Commission, we've participated in, in many uh, informational meetings with the DPW and DOT. Um, back in 2018 and 2019, we commented on the fact that the power cables ran under our city docks, which we thought was a, a kind of an impediment to Future, uh, future activities there. Um, and by 2021, we'd had the power cables uh, substantially moved and uh, had a final proposal uh, with no cables under the docks. Uh, subsequently in 2021, the uh, Connecticut DOT reneged on its easement of the 68-70 uh, North Water Street properties is a, an easement to, North, to Eversource to put their cables there and restricted them to just uh, 90 Water Street for an easement. Um, consequently, the cables moved back under our docks. Um, mm -hmm. I don't believe we've uh, had any uh, further information about this. And then November 22nd, 22, 2022, the uh, Common Council uh, unanimously approved the new plan uh, on the consent agenda. So that's um, where we are today. The, the, the Eversource is filed uh, with the Connecticut State Siting Council for um, their okay to, to go forward. And we're uh, in, still in the uh, comment period for that, that uh, for the Connecticut Siting Council. Um, the reason we're having a joint meeting is that they've extended their deadline till April 3rd. 
the Shellfish Committee Commission's next meeting is April 6th. They've joined us tonight too, so their voices can be heard uh, as well, and we can help them uh, beat the deadline as well. So that said, I, I'd like to ask maybe Jeff Stedman just to kind of kind of review where we are with this and what our, our options are. Well, th th thank you, uh, Alan. As, as you mentioned, the commission has reviewed these plans for going on seven years now, or at least the, the, the idea of this project, which is, as we know, is, is necessary in order to rebuild the Walk Bridge project. In other words, Eversource would not be moving the cables were it not for the Walk Bridge project and the bridge can't be <laughs> replaced unless the cables are, are moved. So it's intricately tied to, to the Walk Bridge project, even though the impacts of the Eversource project were not addressed in, in the environmental impact evaluation of the, uh, of the Walk Bridge project. That, that was challenged in, in, uh, in, in federal court, but the, uh, the, the, the court did not take the case because I believe because of a lack of standing of, of the people that, that brought, the, brought the case. So we, we began looking at this um, when with the first proposal for the, for the uh, relocation of the lines, which would be taken off the overhead. And I, I have some, maybe, maybe I should show the, so, uh, share my screen, Amelia, that, that would be helpful while, while we're talking. Okay, yeah, you should have the permission. Um, let okay. me know if you can't do that. Yeah. Let me. Oh, I gotta go back up here. Bear with me. No, I'm not. Bear with me. It's just it's going it's going slowly. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Your screen. Yeah, here 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 it is. Uh, well, just just bear with me. And of course, the, this first one is just to show the shows the uh, the uh, the elevated the elevated lines and and the old uh, towers that would that would come down. Um, this second slide, and and we we have a more developed presentation with with explanations and so forth. But the the way we we've always understood it, and it's been presented, is that the lines would be taken off the overhead configuration at the police department, um, buried in Elizabeth Street. And then run across, run across the harbor and up, up into this through the park and up into this direction. And the first, the first project that we looked at, which was quite interesting, um, actually this isn't the first one, but this is back in 2018. But the first project called for what what they called threading the electric lines between the pilings, which was sort of an interesting concept at, at the time. And, and fortunately, we had the um, the, the uh, ability to, to consult with, I think it's fair to say that one of the foremost experts in underground utility construction in the country, we're very fortunate to have him take an interest in this. And, and we reviewed these projects and uh, reviewed the proposal for threading it between the pilings. And, and I don't, that certainly wasn't a, a very good idea, we didn't think. Then, then the, the projects were, were subsequently changed and then this is back in 2021, as Alan mentioned, and the, the, the line is, is now, the, the, the two lines are angled here. And, and interestingly, when we, when we first looked at this, um, Eversource had told us that they can't, they couldn't bend the line in, in the directional drilling, and they couldn't bend the line when it was on, on land either. Although we learned subsequently that they could bend the line, the, the line on, on land, but that, that's moot now. But this, this was the proposal in February, 2021, which ang angles to the north and then would go around the, 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 uh, the northern extent of the, of the visitor's dock and then back up, up in, into the park. Now that, that was then subsequently changed. And you know, we, 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 we reviewed this last year um, and it was presented to us by, by the DPW and, and Eversource representatives were there to, to ans answer questions. But they, they determined that in, they, they were not able to get permission to go through the 68 Water Street property. So they could not angle it around the, 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 uh, the, uh, the top of the, of the visitor's dock, but they, they would have to go underneath it again. And they, and they have a substantial distance underneath that, they, that they've uh, drilled the, the pilings. Um, so 
when we last looked at this, last when I say the commission last looked at this uh, last year with, with DPW and Eversource, the, condition, the commission never expressed a, a statement of no objection or approval. Simply the, the letter that was sent to the mayor and the council uh, set, laid, set forth what the commission's responsibilities are to review review this, um, and that the commission would when it would when it's submitted to the siting council, and also to DEEP. It needs a DEEP permit as as well as the siting council, and we had been checking with DEEP regularly to see whether any, they, DEEP had received anything, and and we were told that DEEP did not had not received anything, and then fortunately we looked happened to look at the at the website of the Connecticut Siting Council a, a few weeks ago and learned that it had been submitted to the Siting Council and the comment period was going to be up before the commission meeting. And for, fortunately, no, no one informed us of that. Um, fortunately, uh, another state agency had requested an extension of the comment period. Um, and, and we were able now to review this tonight and, and provide comments. And in, in the letters in the past, numerous letters that, that the commission has sent about this project, the commission, and, and also public meetings in, in uh, you know, prior to the pandemic, uh, in-person meetings in, in City Hall, the commission set, put forth what its responsibilities are, but and the Shellfish Commission too, to review this. Uh, and the, the, the responsibility is to review it with respect to the impacts on the harbor, and also the public boating, the public boating facilities at, at the park. And you know, going back in history, the idea for the visitor stock was the Harbor Commission's idea, uh, and working with, with other city, city agencies. And also the, the most recent improvements to the visitor stock, which was, all, was almost a million dollars, that the Harbor Commission filled out all, of, all the paperwork and the grant application to get to get that uh, to get that grant. So the commission clearly has a a significant in, interest in, in reviewing and commenting on this. And when we, when we first got involved with this, we communicated with the siting council. And that, that we were told at the time that, that there, are two, there are two approval processes for, for these energy, energy related facilities. One is, is essentially uh, applying for a, a certificate of environmental compatibility and, and public need. It's sort of like a full permit. The, the other process is to petition the siting council for a declaratory ruling that the full certificate is, is not needed. And when we first started talking with the site, and, and that latter process we, we understood was for projects that are essentially maintenance or, or improvements of existing projects. So when we first talked with the siting council, the, the, we were told that it hadn't been determined yet whether the council could approve this under the under the petition for declaratory ruling or the certificate of environmental compatibility. They, they now clearly have chosen the, the, the latter. We were also told by, by formerly by the siting council that although there is no requirement for approval under a petition to hold a public hearing, the siting council will hold a public hearing often if requested to do so, if there is local interest in, in the project. And then of course, the other, the other question that we've addressed and, and discussed for, for many years is the impact that this proposal will have on the city's future ability to maintain, repair, replace, uh, do work on, on the visitor's dock and the boat launching ramp. And if you remember at one time, we were told that it would be no different than call before you dig, which was sort of an interesting concept, which of course isn't applicable, but, but there, we've also told that there will be restrictions and that the city will, will have to request or, or obtain approval from Eversource to do to do certain work uh, on the on the visitors dock, and we also know that that the Corps of Engineers has to issue a, an approval for this as well, uh, because it, it it's going underneath the navigation channel. So we don't we don't know what the I, I don't know I haven't talked with the Corps recently about the status of that approval, but the Corps of Engineers has a standard condition in 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 such matters that. If they, if they are to, affect, uh, if the electric line affects in any way the core's ability to work in the channel or deepen the channel, then the utility has to move, move the line. I mean, in, in this instance, I, you know, for our approval, we're not gonna certainly be able to tell them to move the line, but we've also discussed for many years that there should be a condition in any approval 
that would that would make clear that the city will not be limited in any way with respect to maintaining, repairing, replacing these these public boating facilities. And if they are, if the city is, that Eversource will be responsible for compensation and any additional costs that that are associated with with the uh, with with the city's actions to repair or replace it. Now. Also, and I'll stop talking. I'm sorry, but it, you know we spent eight years, seven years on this. There's also there's a relationship between the DEEP permit and the siting council per, uh, permit. The siting council has the ultimate authority over the siting of of these sorts of of utility uh, infrastructure projects. But the DEEP has the has the authority of how it should be done in order to protect the the environment. And the siting council's goals are also with respect to you know, providing reliable energy uh, and, 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 and trying to help the consumer of the energy, but, but also protecting the, the environment and also protecting recreational facilities. So that, that's all the background that there is that, that, and oh, and also the other thing is the way the process normally works is that the siting council process is, is finished first and then the applicant applies to DEEP for the DEEP permits. And that's, of course, because the siting council could conceivably not agree to the location of the line, and then they'd have to redo their, their application to DEEP if they had already started that process. But, but in this instance, we know because of the, the significance of this project and the time constraints that they're essentially going to do these, these approval processes, we were told, concurrently, even though they have not yet submitted their application to DEEP yet for the DEEP permits. Now we've inquired of DEEP whether they will, we're assuming that they will require Eversource to come back, DEEP will, to, to the commission with the pre-application plans because the pre-application plans we looked at years ago are not for the same location and the same route. So those are all the things that we have to sort of come together with and, and uh, reach agreement on, on the appropriate recommendations to the siting council. And, uh, and I, I could, I could suggest what I think the recommendation should be. I already have a little bit, but but that that's the background. And th thank you for letting me talk so long. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Um, Chairman, I'd like to say something, Kibby. Uh, I I've been thank through this since the beginning, and they showed us going way over to the towards the bridge, and it was feasible. Now we're back to where they want to go under the dock, like. They just gave us a dog and pony show. They were still going to go the way they were going to go. I mean, there's no change. They're going to go between. What happened? The pile, they're going to go between the pilings. Well, it, it, Peter, in, in all in all due respect, uh, it, they they did make a first attempt, but using the a lot that was closer to the closer to the bridge. Obviously, there was a monkey wrench thrown in the whole operation with the with several applications, concurrent applications at the at the location where they cannot use no cannot do the underwater uh, under uh, uh, the drilling at that location. So the, the current location right now puts that at a different angle. But you're right. Uh, the the original the original proposal was going between the docks. This proposal now is going probably about thirty or forty feet below the the pilings. So uh, there, there's clearly a, a little bit of a difference, but not much of a difference. So if I can have the floor, so the one thing Jeff didn't touch on was this, this um, the agreements that I sent out today that I got from, from DPW. So the city has entered into agreements with Eversource to allow them to use, there's, there's one specifically for the work, and then there's, the, there's a, a temporary work area management agreement, and then another one that specifically gives them the right to go on the route that, they, that is shown there under the docks. So the city council has signed off on this and the mayor and the mayor on behalf of the city has entered an agreement with Eversource. So the routing is a done deal as far as the city of Norwalk is concerned. Thanks, Chris. So any, any course we so any course we take will be contrary to the position of the city of Norwalk. So just so we're yeah, clear we, on that, because we I found this out this afternoon. We didn't, we got this inform, I just got this information. From, from DPW because the petition actually states that they have an agreement with the city. So, um, you know, 
as as far as I'm concerned, as a representative of Norwalk, this is a done deal. The the route the routing is a done deal, um, and they are compensating the city to the tune of fifty thousand dollars for any future, um, you know, extra engineering work that has to be done in order to work around the location. Um, and there is language in there that it doesn't preclude us from working, but it says that any that they would review any plans and any work would be coordinated with them on site, something to that effect. And um, I, I can't check it, but that's also in there. There is a provision for that in the agreement. So there's $50,000 for visitors dock, which we could, we could take and go build floating docks as soon as we get the check. That's a visitor that, you know, that's an improvement to the visitors dock as far as I would be concerned. <laughs> and there's $10,000 for the shellfish commission. And that's, that's the compensation that's in the agreement that the city has signed that we are getting unless we somehow get managed to get it revoked, which I don't think is a proper course of action to try to undo the city council's work. Thank you, Chris. Mike, give your hand up. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, apologies, everyone. I do, according to the, the bylaws section five that I'm reading here, I do have a conflict of interest. Uh, I'm, I work in the energy a business and out of an abundance of caution. So not for ever source, but it looks like uh, I do need to abstain. Uh, I thought that that was just for the vote, but it looks like here it says for uh, all discussion. It doesn't say exactly when, it doesn't say it has to be at the beginning. So I'm just gonna remove myself from the meeting here and I will join you all for the regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Alan, can I make a comment? Yes, sir. Chris, I'd like to ask you, was the the uh, money that was uh, granted to the city from Eversource, is that exclusive for the visitor's dock or is that going to a general fund can be used at the discretion of the city or expressly used for the visitor's dock area? It's ex it's expressly for the for the um, engineering and permitting for work for future work on the visitor's dock. Well, my, my, my only comment would be respectfully to say that, that the, the agreement by the council and the mayor cannot eliminate the authority or the responsibility of the Harbor Commission to do its review as, as it's authorized to do. So I, I don't disagree that, the, that the, the route is not likely to change, of course, but that doesn't excuse the Harbor Commission for serving the public interest, including the people who use the visitor's dock who don't have any knowledge of what this proposal is about. Um, but I, I, otherwise you'd have the mayor and the city, there would be no need for the Harbor Commission. The mayor and the council could, could make decisions affecting the Harbor and that would el eliminate the commission's authority. And when we wrote numerous times when the commission wrote to the council and to the mayor, making it clear that the, that the Harbor Commission had certain specific authorities under the general statutes and the, and the city code to review these proposals and make recommendations. The, the, the regulatory agencies can do what they wish with, with those recommendations, but I don't believe the commission should, should step aside uh, in, in this instance. Well, we, we, other thoughts we, on we, that? well, we, in hindsight, we should have, we should have made our, made our opinions known at the city council meeting when this was voted on, but we were either, we were either kept out of the loop or dropped the ball. I don't know which. It's well, not, really, well, we not could... really important at this point, but you know, we our our primary primary purpose is 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 a is a func is part of the functions of the city of Norwalk. Um, yeah, but the, the commission is an independent an independent body to the extent that it has specific authorities. That uh, uh, that's that's my opinion, and that's the. I'm way not it's... saying I'm not saying we 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 can't, but I you know. And there was also a discussion about whether it was appropriate to accept those monies uh, that, that were offered both to the Harbor Commission and to the Shellfish Commission at the last meeting. Well, that was your objection, I believe, Jeff. Not nobody else's, was well, it? Well, there was there was discussion about it. But again, the city has already signed those documents. It's notarized. It's all it's all very much a done deal. Um, I don't understand how they accepted fifty thousand dollars. What the heck would fifty thousand dollars be? For an engineer to redesign stuff and everything for us. That's nothing. No, that's right. That's, it's no, a, it's that's not no money at all. And it's nothing to help us because they're giving us, they're making our work harder. To do oh, any our, work on that dock is harder. $50,000 is like a slap in the face. 
We can't change it. Well, at least let them pay for everything we do. And then what does I don't disagree with, with you. For the DEP process, the commission would, would step aside for the DEP uh, regulatory process too? And not, and not comment? Um, My feeling, just to jump in on that, uh, is that we really have an obligation to make a comment on, on all of this uh, in the city's interest, uh, even if the city's already, uh, even if, the, if the, the cow's already out of the barn, as we like to say, that uh, we could go on record there. There are things that could be done to this. If, the, you know, if that, those cables were uh, 20 feet below the riverbed, it, right where they are, it might be less of a problem. There are things like that that I don't know if they've been considered. If you buried them deeper, if it would be less of a, a a problem for driving for driving piles in that area, I'm not an engineer to know that, but I know there are other technologies where they could put the cables deeper, for example. Um, well, but, I, I think we understood all along that we were not going to be able to influence any more than we already have the route. But but in terms of the condition, similar to the condition that the federal government would attach with respect to work on the channel, that that. The siting council and and deep would have a condition of approval that the city would not be limited in their ability to maintain, repair, replace, enhance the dock. And if there is added expenses for doing that, Eversource or its successor would pay the cost. And if the city is limited, then Eversource would compensate the city for it and have that as a condition. And the other the other point is that in terms of, of being looking out for the for the interests of the people who use the park and use the ramp and use the visitor stock to request that a, a public hearing be held to to allow the, the public to understand what's being what's going on and allow them to comment if we if we hadn't looked at the at the siting council's website we wouldn't have known that this was that this that there was a public that this had been submitted and that there was a a, a public comment period well i got one thing i think uh I think we should send a letter to the Siting Council and DEP that Eversource should be totally liable for anything we want to do with those docks. They basically gave us a dog and pony show the whole time and still ended up going back to where they first started. They should be liable for anything. We got to move something. It's their responsibility to pay for it and everything else. We want to change. What, that's what I was trying to get at, Pete, uh, Pete with, with, you know, more formal language. Yes, I you know I think there's a, a place for a little bit of understanding here of how what you think about a waterfront installation like a marina is you know that uh, pilings get moved all the time. It's not like the piling is put in there and it stays in one spot for fifty years. They are they're pulled out, they break, they have to be reinstalled. They're moved ten feet this way that way. Boats get wider, so slips have to get wider. So. Pilings move around a lot, and and what troubles me about this is we're kind of stuck with what we have. There's no easy way to move anything, and to, and to, to do the move uh, requires a, a huge expense. I mean, if you're talking about engineering it, then somebody's going to be on site and making sure we don't uh, the pile driver doesn't puncture the puncture the cables. You know, it's it's a big deal. That's what I'm saying. Fifty thousand dollars is a slap in the face. Well, again, that, that's uh, that, that's maybe somebody who's really naive. The, the more than we, more so than those of us who've worked with this stuff are. Uh, but it's, I think, it's water over the dam right now at this point. No, I I, I certainly agree with that that statement, Alan. I really do. Uh, I think we're we're sort of uh, hands are tied with regard to what we're capable of doing, perhaps in the future. Uh, I look at this as a sort of a negative because uh, and, and public perception in itself, just dealing with uh, you've got 215 kilovolt cables going underneath a public facility of, you know, don't step on the wire, so to speak. Uh, I, um, just make sure you have good zincs on your boat. And, there you go. <laughs> and the straight current won't kill you. That's correct. Um, you got to remember that's two, three phase. It's three wires. 115 kV lines. A lot of not an electrician, Peter. I know. So I, 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 you're I, talking. I, I can see a big red sign on the dock. You know, please be careful where you step, type thing. Uh, but in any event, 
uh, this is something that the city of Norfolk is going to have to live with for, uh, I guess, till well, until perhaps things change, they find a different uh, methodology to uh, to reroute cable. Uh, well, the, there is a difference. They just don't want to do it. That's the problem. They want to do what they want to do. They don't want anyone to tell them what to do. So they're going to do what they want. What I think is we should write the same side encounter of them that the proposal that they gave is jeopardizing us doing any work on our ramps and docks and that they should be liable and pay for any movement and any broken piles we got to replace or anything like that due to the fact that they want to go that route when they could have chosen the other side of the bridge that route there's cables going there all the time there's no question about it peter that you know you're going to need special engineering techniques and and uh, personnel in that area during the time of the reconstruction or any kind of refurbishing of that dock. Right, so they should pay for right. that. You're gonna need a certain, certainly a different type of crew uh, that's gonna be there. Certainly Eversource's crew or whoever Eversource's successor will be. And I think that's important to keep in mind too, that uh, that uh, if Eversource is out of the picture, that whoever takes over this utility uh, facility, that they will also be responsible for future, uh, future uh, uh, changes or conditions that need to be done. So. I agree, but I still think we got to get that letter out yeah. Yeah. to both DEP and Siding Council. Well, we can certainly express our opinion, like I said, but the DEP, yeah. the DEP has their uh, own marching orders. Uh, we do have ours, and they certainly have jurisdiction over our uh, recommendations, which certainly made very clear to us in the past with the recommendations that we've made with other uh, modifications or any recommendations I said that we made on the walk bridge project uh, as of about three months ago, if you recall. So, yeah. so uh, uh, you know, we can certainly make a statement and uh, to be consistent basically with all of our policies that we've, that we put forward thus far so that, uh, so that our positions have not changed with regard to uh, our consistency with maintaining uh, some sort of sanity in the far of the harbor management plan is concerned and and uh, our due diligence as far as the harbor management is concerned as well so uh, I certainly would agree with uh, perhaps making a statement uh, and let the DEP either yay or nay uh, that that um, uh, uh, that information but but John we're not th this is a matter before the siting council now so that that's, that's, that's correct yes yeah. the DEP but I think I think the siding council should be made aware as well as the DEP of our of our of our concerns. Well, that that that's what we were trying to get at tonight as a, as an agreement of what, or a consensus is what the, what the commission should send in terms of recommendations and comments to to the siding council. Yeah. I mean, it's also interesting. Again, the statement that you made earlier, Jeff, with regard to uh, why they went the route of be call, of calling this particular but there was a petition fifteen sixty referring it to a petition for a declaratory ruling, where as opposed to a certificate of environmental compatibility and public need, which has a different set of criteria. Right. Well, well, I, I, again, the, 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 well, we discussed this with the siting council at the beginning. So my, my, my thought was that that's simply for the public record. You know, who knows what's gonna happen here in you know, 25 or years or 30 years, but for the public record, let, let the siting council explain why they made the decision to approve this as, as they have. Um, I mean, this is, this is, this is Steve, excuse me, Steve, Steve has his hand up, Steve Barter. Steve, you muted, Steve. Sorry about that, guys. Are there any local entities that are formal parties to the siting council event? I don't think we have anyone from the Norwalk area representing, represented on the siting council. No. Not, not not with respect to this this action, Steve, that we're we're aware of. You're, you're so, thinking you're thinking about parties to a public hearing or parties to to, to be interveners. So there's no representation of any Norwalk interests when citing council hears this, uh, unless the third taxing district might have some say in it. I don't know. It's my understanding that they would have to formally apply to be. Um, um, parties that 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 I don't know, and if not, I think that makes this public hearing even more important. But but the the siting council told us five years ago that that uh, that that there was a pro 
although not required as part of the declaratory ruling process that the council could hear could hold a, a uh, public hearing if, if requested and if the request was not deemed un, unreasonable I, I, my opinion is that that we should uh should write a letter and we should uh, to the citing council or our right opinion to the uh citing council that this really uh, does impair the uh the city's interest in, in, in developing the waterfront uh, to have this, uh, it's, it's a huge expense anytime you do anything. And I, so I think that's part of one thing. I think asking for a hearing on this, a public hearing uh, is another uh, called by the, it's called by the siting council to, to uh, evaluate this. Cause it is, it's, you think about the, all the, the, the future things that could happen uh, in this area and that it would be just, really beneficial for the city um, that it would become almost uh, impossible to execute uh, or incredibly complicated and, and uh, complex to achieve. So I think we really ought to you know, put the oar in the water and say, uh, try to uh, get a hearing and uh, our feeling that this really is a, uh, an impediment to economic development of this, of this area. You know, you look at the rest of it too, going, uh, Underneath Elizabeth Street, kind of locks Elizabeth Street into be into where it's going to be forever. You know, there's no chance it, it really impedes development of South Norwalk as well. So, Elizabeth Street, the DPW has signed off on this, the City Council signed off this, and the Mayor signed off on this. So, all of our concerns about the economic liabilities, the f future financial. Right. Of, of, a, of a city facility, there's no environmental, we're not discussing any environmental impacts here. We're not discussing any anything specific to the harbor. The city has agreed to this. We're just wasting our time and we're and we have and I see no benefit to us to try to counter a decision that's been made by the elected representatives of the city of Norwalk. I agree with you, Chris, on that. But so, why are we doing it? Why are we? Why are we still going to send a letter that serves absolutely no purpose other than to antagonize, you know, the people we have to work with in this city? It does serve a purpose. The city was going to pay uh, eight hundred thousand dollars because we're going to move some pilings and stuff. Well, that's, but we have to hire engineers and everything else. So the the, the that's city why they representatives. The, the city representatives who have responsibility for that have agreed to a price on that. It is a negotiated and done deal. Everything we're taking into consideration- $50,000 is it nothing. It's nothing. Well, it is, it's, it's what the city agreed to. It's what, it's, it's what the city agreed to, Pete. You know why they agreed? And I'll tell you why they agreed. Someone's hand was washed. Don't tell me they weren't. Well, then, then you go. Then, then, then I don't want to be any part of a statement that includes, you know, accusations of, of bribery in the city. I'm not, I'm not saying that. All I'm well, saying is fifty thousand dollars to any person would tell you a pilot alone will be ten thousand dollars to change there. No, it won't. I no, it won't. Uh, the uh, engineer uh, from the you need, uh, the engineer uh, for the uh, electric. Uh, the engineer uh, for the person to put it in. You need the law. You have to uh, have insurance for that. Peter, Peter, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Peter, I think we're going off. I know, I know Peter, funny, I Pete. Think... You don't need to insult each other's intelligence either. Yeah. Enough, gentlemen. All right, Chris, I just wanted to mention also one thing is that what we're doing is focusing on the harbor. Uh, what, what the city is doing, they certainly focused on Elizabeth Street and inland. Well, but there is precedent. There is precedent for what we're asking for. And that, and I think Jeff maybe correct me in that, for example, the Army, when the Army Corps carries out a project, and if there's any any interference with with dredging or any kind of a, a work that yep. is being done in the harbor, and there is a utility, for example, it's a cable, and I think there was a cable in New Haven, Jeff, that there was a probably Army Corps requested that they move that cable during the course of of dredging a 35 foot harbor. So that was on the on the back of the of the person that 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 put right. that cable in. So yep. in this case here, someone should be liable for the impediment that that they put into place. And it shouldn't be the city's responsibility for anything. No, the, the, well, that's the, these cables are, are deeper than the other cables they just replaced. That that I know, but we don't know. We we have have we well maybe maybe the DPW has seen those plans, but as far as as far as we are concerned, we don't know exactly what that depth was. You, I have an idea. I understand it goes far deeper than what they did originally plan. And the original plan was no, not, not only the original plan. I'm talking about the other plans, the the other the cables they they've already leaked relocated between the bridges. 
that was part of the Walk Bridge project, or it's, I don't know if it's happened yet. It's part well, of the- railroad, Basically railroad cables, not the transmission lines. Correct, the, 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 the Metro North cables, that, I guess that's, that, that is yet to be done. I'm, I'm still thinking in terms of the plans, but yeah. they're, going to, they're going to cut and cover those with coffer, you know, with coffer dam construction and cut and cover those basically from, it hasn't been done because it's going to start at the, at the um, IMAX. I thought, site. I thought that was an excellent idea as far as the engineering uh, construct was concerned. And I was wondering why they couldn't do the same thing with those power cables. And that's, that was- Well, the, the power cables are going to be deeper than those cables. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, if, if ever, just one thing, if I could interrupt, uh, John Crespo is trying to get into the meeting and he didn't have a link, if Amelia could. Uh... Uh, he's uh, Technically, he's not a member of the commission right now. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I sent him a link to be an attendee so he can still watch and mm -hmm. for the other, har for the Harbor Management Commission meeting that's starting in like two minutes, which mm -hmm. also this is a good time to start thinking about wrapping up. Um, but he can participate in public comment there if he wants to talk about anything Laurie, on the agenda. Laurie Sanders yeah. up there. Yep. Laurie? I just, yeah, I just wanted to add my two cents, which is that I agree with Chris that it's a done deal if it's already been okayed by the Common Council and the mayor. Having said that, I think we absolutely should write, have something in writing that expresses our objections for the record. I, I agree, I don't think they're gonna make a difference, but I think that it's important information uh, for the city to have. And it's important for us to maintain our position of authority, even if it's not always recognized. Well, it's not so much of an authority, it's, 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 it's managing the harbor in the public's interest. And I think, I think the commission members who have on this commission have enough background and information to, uh, to certainly manage this harbor in the public's interest, what's, what's good for the public. And I think what's good for, at least hopefully, what we think for the city of Norwalk. And I, as I said, I think, uh, uh, I think all the members of the commission certainly perhaps feel in the same, uh, pull up in the same direction as I, I think, I hope. Uh, I, think, I think we've made good solid judgment uh, and call with regard to harbor management. Uh, the harbor has been running very smoothly. Harbor has been uh, working very efficiently. Uh, I think there, there are certainly some problems, but I think in this aspect here, I think it's important for us to certainly make mention of carrying through our authority in regard to review of an application, whether they accept or reject it, that's certainly, but we certainly go on record as, as uh, uh, being uh, uh, a guide, guide to guide the public interest in, in this whole process here to know exactly what's going on in this area, and that for future use of this harbor, uh, this is our gateway. This this visitor's dock is our gateway uh, from for other uh, 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 boating facility boat, I mean, boating activity in this harbor. Uh, that that's our that's our that's our only only section that we know of anyway that a, a reasonable public access could could go into place. And yet now in this public access, we have we have two hundred and fifteen kilovolt uh, wires going right underneath this facility. Right. Hopefully, hopefully it's safe enough. But in, in the concept of the eye of the general public, I just, I really do. Uh, I certainly would have, uh, uh, you know, uh, myself anyway, like knowing where those cables are, but I think it's, I think it's going to be a, a matter of perception too. Hopefully that the general public will feel uh, that, that there should be no problem of, of dealing with that area with regard to those cables being associated underneath those piles in the way they are. Right. I, I think so, uh, we're, we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, for wrap it up and uh, decide if we're going to make a recommendation or not. Just one last comment, I, in response to Lori, I don't think it would, we weren't, I wasn't talking about objecting to this, yeah. but if, if Eversource has made the statement that the city will not be significantly limited, then put that into a condition in, in, the, uh, in the statement of approval. And right. if, it can, if, it can, if the city in the future is, or if there's added expense, then Eversource will provide compensation or pay for the added expense. That's not to say that it shouldn't be done or it shouldn't be in the same route, on the same route, but just to, to say if, if, right, if, if the city is limited, it ever source compensates or pays the, or, or is responsible for the added cost. And then the other, the other th comment to, to consider is that the, the boating public and the, the, the users of Veterans Park have not had a chance to comment on this. They don't know about this proposal uh, that's now pending before the regulatory agency. So, a request to hold a, not an adjudicatory hearing with with uh, you know parties and a hearing officer, but the same sort of hearing as was held for the wastewater treatment plant, an, in, an informational hearing, which allows the people to under the, 
the people who use the park to understand what's going on. It's, it's not not with lawyers, but it but it's it's an informational hearing, and to th th those are the the and the, and then the third is to ask the to the siting council for the public record and posterity to explain why they decided to approve it with this 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 uh, this process. It's not an objection. Uh, rule. That's correct. Yes. So, so I'd like to formalize those three points as a motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Stephen. So, uh, yeah, so first point, um, and the um, administrator will note uh, the details, but a public hearing. Second, that uh, public record um, affect what the uh, reflect what the commentary was, and that the condition of uh, statement of approval uh, indicate that Eversource or its successor will pay for any adjustment, um, maintenance, repair, or replacement. Uh, the Donovan Boating Facility related to the twin 115 KV lines. I second that motion. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all in any discussion? Other than I know, Chris. Um, well, I was going to offer to share what's actually in the agreement if you guys want to see that. Well, but it's. Chris, does the agreement interfere with what we're what we're trying to propose? Well, it, or do we, it, does what we try to propose interfere with the agreement? The agreement? Well, it, it's 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 it, the city's already agreed to substantial parts of what we've agreed. They, you know, if we're asking for compensation, we've agreed to take five hundred dollars in lieu of future comp, in lieu of future damages, or for two. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, that that's a. I'm starting to do lawyer speak here. I don't. I'm not a lawyer, but you know. Um, what we're doing is making making a request, putting putting it into a motion. Uh, as I said, uh, like it's 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 just to go on record as far as how the commission feels should how we should move forward in this. I don't think I don't think we're we're uh, undermining what the city is planning to do. The the uh, uh, cables will be going underneath the docks. Uh, there certainly is a a viable way to do that is certainly under the harbor I had no objection from going underneath the harbor my only objection in this entire process since 2016 was going underneath underneath a public facility such as what we have and where we do dredging where we do uh, uh piling settings and yeah. where we have vessels coming in that that sink spuds down into the into the into the substrate so such as the well we don't know whether the Amistad will be coming in but I'm certainly they're going to need some sort of stabilization. Hey. No one's no arguing about it going underneath. We know it's going to go. We just want to make sure that in the future, if things have to get done, why should the city have to dish out so much money for something that they decided to put there? Uh, that's not really our, our discussion, Pete. It's, I know, but that's all I'm saying is oh. that's why we're saying about compensation. A better compensation than fifty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah, and I don't think Chris that we're saying don't do this, but I think there's certainly just on top of that, sort of a, another layer of protection that at least from the viewpoint of the Harbor Management Commission that we're working in the public interest. That, that's 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 my only comment on this. All right. Can I share my screen so, so we can actually see what what has already been agreed to? Just yes. Jeff, you have to stop sharing if you don't mind. So this is this is what the, in yellow here is the is is the agreement and what what that the city's request Eversource will provide personnel to review, support, and monitor the installation of any upgrades to the docking facilities that would present risk to the installation and to the installed electrical transmission cables. Eversource requested any upgrades be installed after Eversource completes its project, and that the city consult with Eversource on any such future upgrades during the design work on such upgrades. And then there's, and for that, they're giving us $50,000 to accommodate them and $10,000 to shellfish just, um, just because. Well, okay, we, have a, we do have a motion on the floor. Uh, so we, and we need to move along. The, the thing that kind of is deficient in that agreement there that is, is, is that it, there's a bunch of highly that just talks about 
um, upgrading. It doesn't talk about even maintenance, which is uh, replacing a piling means you've got to get a, a technical person and approval from uh, someone else. And I think it's right to ask for uh, compensation for the, the future maintenance uh, alone. So I, 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 I kind of... Uh, but that, that also acknowledges that the work could present a risk to the... Uh... To, to the cables so that, that there is a, a potential impact of the cables with respect to what, what could take place there. That's correct. That's their qualifying. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They, they've made an admission that there is a potential problem. That there is a potential problem, right. That's correct. It's right there. I mean, I, I mean, I can read English and understand it. I, 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 I'm going to call a question on the motion. Uh, if there's, is there more discussion? Can I have a reading of the motion? I. Yep. Sure. So, Stephen, uh, could you restate? Yeah, no, no problem. So, I'll just put these as bullet points, uh, Chris, if I could. Sure. So, um, first, that there'll be a request for a public hearing um, such that this information could be more publicly disseminated. Two, that the public record um, will reflect um, the desire of these commissions uh, with respect to uh, the third. Uh, point, which is that the Siting Council's uh, condition um, uh, statement of approval uh, would indicate that Eversource or its successor would pay for any adjustments, maintenance, repairs, or replacements in and around the Donovan Boating Center. And Steve, I think you added that come as a result of their work. Did you add that? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Scratch that. All right. That's the uh, that's the motion. Uh, all in favor? This is Harbor Commissioners. Aye. Jeff. Any anybody? How many do we have there? I, I have my hand up. Bartosz, Lori Jones. Yeah. John Mangles Pinto. is a yes. Ah, okay. I'm trying to see if we have five votes is the question. Pinto, Kibbe, Jones, Mangles. Steve, do you vote on our commission? So it's my understanding this is a joint. Joint mission, meeting. right. So I vote aye. Yay. I abstain. What does that mean? Two, three, four. I think that's a, a motion passes, I believe, in my assessment. Shall we call it as a roll, Mr. Kibbe? We should. Yes. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to read it. Okay. So uh, Mr. Bardish votes aye. Mr. McDonald. Abstain. Mr. Kibbe. Aye. Mr. Mangles. Aye. Dr. Pinto. Aye. Ms. Jones. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And I think that's all we have, sir. Very good. Most passes. Thank you all for this. I think uh, we we will draft that and share it with you all, and get it off to the uh, before the before the end of the deadline. Hopefully, so we can. Um, there's a motion to adjourn. This uh, special part of the meeting. I make the motion to adjourn. I yeah. second. Miles. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, we're going to re reconfigure after a, like a, a two minute break and we'll uh, start the regular commission meeting.
video. I'm going to wait half a, half a minute for folks to get back and we'll be here. We can be in the next meeting in uh, a few moments. Mike Matthews, you are ready to be back? Good to go, Chair Kibby. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm going to yeah. call the meeting. Call me the order at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Jeff, do you want to do the pledge again? Jeff Angles? Bruce did it before, but I'll do it. No, I think. Let's do it. <laughs> I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for, for which it stands. stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and for, justice all. for all. As you were, uh, uh, I'll read the uh, the uh, the roll. Uh, please respond if you're here. Uh, Matt Gifford, Laurie Jones, here. Alan Kibbe, here. Chris McDonald. Here. Jeff Mangles. Here. Mike Matthews. Here. John Pinto. Here. Uh, Dennis Santella. Not here. Um, and just to note, John Crespo is, is, uh, has reapplied to the commission, but he's uh, not officially a commission member at this point. They were awaiting his uh, mayoral approval, in case you weren't aware. Um, we moved public comment to the uh, beginning of these meetings. So this is a time for public comment. Uh, do we have any public commenters? We have one hand raised and uh, we did receive some correspondence uh, inquiring about abandoned vessels. And um, Sergeant Segley let us know that um, that it was specifically at the by U-Haul. So that Marina management has been working with them. So they're addressing that. And um, I will let Linnell Jones speak for a public comment. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm unmuted now. Hello, Linnell. You are. Okay, hi. Thank you. I wanted to thank the commission for the letter that you wrote to planning and zoning regarding one cemetery street. I, as evidenced by your last meeting, if you don't ask the tough questions, no one will. Again, thank you. Sorry it took me so long to do this. Hopefully I can unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Are any other, any other uh, correspondence or any other comments from the public? I have not received uh, any other correspondence from the public and 
no one else has their hand raised for attendees. Um, if any attendees want to speak, I'll give them like another minute or so, maybe not even. Um, so I think that no, might be I it for public comment. Thanks, Amelia. Uh, next is uh, approval of minutes. Again, we're putting these at the beginning of the meeting so we can get them underway. Uh, one, of the th one of the things we uh, want to do is be sure that the changes that we individually make to the minutes are uh, that we all understand what those changes are before we vote on them. So um, Laurie Jones, our secretary, is going to read the changes to the uh, minutes as they were presented by uh, uh, the, the uh, by Amelia, actually. Laurie, so, we have the floor. Yep. OK, so the changes are minor for the most part. It's really correcting Jeff's name, adding that Matt was absent. The most major was um, Jeff Stedman's input on how we should be making motions regarding applications in that the Harbor Management Commission doesn't have approval of these applications, but our role is to find whether or not they're consistent with the Harbor Management Plan. So Jeff, it says that I made these changes, but they're really Jeff's changes um, to, ch to change the motions a bit to reflect not that we're approving, but that we're finding them inconsistent or consistent or no objection. At some point, we may want Jeff to explain that so we all understand what the appropriate motion is. Um, we may not want to take the time right now to do that. So Amelia, if you scroll on down, you'll see. So you know it's just changing from approved to find no objection. And you can keep scrolling. Um, in Jeff's report, he made a couple of updates that you guys listened to during the meeting. So I guess the point here is just to for you guys to see what the updated minutes are before we make a motion. Yep, Jeff sure. also took out Supreme. It's not Supreme Court, it's just the court. So nothing that changes any of our business. It's really primarily about how we save motion. All right, thank you, Lori. Uh, is there a motion? Approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Well, uh, minutes are approved. Application review committee, Mr. Pinto, uh, Dr. Pinto. Yeah, maybe, Laura, maybe we could just very quickly go over what your comment was with regard to uh, the difference between, you know, approval and uh, allowing the, the uh, no, no uh, objection to the, that's, we usually do that for uh, pre-applications because oftentimes they'll submit a pre-application, we'll review them. If we say it's consistent with the plan, oftentimes that application is modified. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so we need we need the leeway to to review that application in its second go around when it actually goes back to the DEP or goes out for public opinion. So that's where we reserve the right. So it's not consistent with the plan until we see the final see the final plans. And in most pre applications, we don't see that pre app. We don't see that. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yes. Sorry to keep talking, John. But we also yeah. talked about with Laurie about the distinction between reviewing applications to DEEP and reviewing applications that are forwarded by, by planning and zoning to the commission for, for land use proposals. So there's a difference. And we also talked about putting together a, a, a flow chart of, of the review process that everybody could then have. And, and we, we, that would form the basis of, of everybody being on the same page with respect to the recommendations and when, when they need to be made and, and so forth. So we were working on that flow chart now. We didn't have it for tonight. John, thanks for that clarification. Well, so Alan, we have on the on the first item was uh, one cemetery street. And you said you want to review the Redness and Mead letter and review the response of the Connecticut DEP, which is the last on uh, the last page of the agenda item below. Uh, do you have uh, did you want to review that, Alan, or what? I know you wrote a letter. We had a letter. No, I, I just wanted to to uh, that's the re that's the their response to deep. If anything needs to be said uh, to the deep letter, we've been asking to see what deep's response was. And that's it. If, if you want to discuss that, that's uh, why I put it on the agenda. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the DEP basically is um, uh, they really had no major, major, major comment other than uh, dealing with the FEMA rules and regulations as far as uh, how many units would go into an area that uh, perhaps would be in, in a low area versus a high area for uh, for uh, for flooding. That's as I, that's as I gather. Yeah. And yeah, Jeff. So there's no no further discussion required. Okay. Jeff. Well, we prepared the letter that that uh, went before the, to uh, planning and zoning before the hearing to just to clarify that the commission neither approved or, or found the project consistent with the plan, but rather expressed no objection to it moving forward to the review with the understanding ba based on information provided by the applicant that it was not going to increase the already allowable residential density on the property and that it would, there would be a substantial um, improvement in, in stormwater and that the other thing is we, we, we assume uh, that that planning and zoning determined that the, that the uh, DEP's comments were, were properly uh, uh, addressed or adequately addressed by the applicant. So that that this to clarify that the commission never issued a statement of approval. It was and, and the, the no objection was based on the understanding of the, of, with, with, the, with the information provided by the applicant. Yes, I, I, I circulated that letter to the uh, Plan Review Committee as well, so everybody saw what we said, sort of only about Cemetery Street. We had also uh, commented that we had not had a response to the deep letter, and we were interested in seeing that, and that's what this redness and need uh, letter is, is the response to deep's comments. But we'd also want to make sure that planning and zoning has, has feels that those responses are, are adequate before any decision is made. I mean, that, that's the applicant's response, but how, how does how does planning and zoning feel about right. it? We're, we're just asking the planning and zoning address the response and, and be assured that, that, that the deep comments are addressed. And the, those comments had to do with development in the floodplain and also uh, providing appropriate and safe and enjoyable pub public access to, to, the, uh, to the area, to the, to the intertidal area. If, if the commission wished to make any additional comments, it would it would just simply be to reiterate what we've already said, and that, that it's our we, we assume or expect that that the planning and zoning will, will determine that deep's comments have been addressed, uh, have been adequately addressed and con considered and addressed in in the planning and zoning decision. That, that, that's all I could think of about that. Oh, well, fun. I mean, we, we, we made comment, we reviewed the uh, waterfront and drainage, uh, stormwater runoff of everything was certainly right. uh, uh, inappropriate. Uh, I mean, uh, very appropriate as far as uh, managing the water, water uh, uh, flow going into the uh, mill pond, because that's always been a um, uh, soft spot with regard to uh, sediment uh, conditions and uh, 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 contamination in that area when they first dredged that area for, as we pointed out, for controlling the mercury that was uh, deposited in that uh, in that area some years back. And then the adjustment of the berms that, that went in there, so, yeah. The, 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 I put this in the agenda simply to, to, to complete the discussion that we were uh, asking for information, uh, a response on the deep recommendations, and this is the applicant's response. If we have no reaction to that, that's, that's fine. That's the reason it's on the agenda. Just waiting for it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we have any business to, to do at this point. No, I think we're all set with that. Okay, let's let's move on. I was there for inform really for information. If anybody else yep. had anything to say, all right. So the next application is uh, uh, Twenty Six Valley Road, which is a continuation from last uh, uh, last week's uh, meeting uh, with uh, with. Um, uh, wait, let me get so I can get that up here. Uh, and this was the applicant proposes to retain and maintain the waterfront structures. There's a 16 uh, float stops will be added to the underside of the existing wooden dock uh, on the corners and both the four by 20 foot docks will have no, will have two extra float stops added to the center. Uh, loose uh, scattered rock will be removed from the 280 foot seawall and replaced and the wall elevation varies from between seven foot and nine foot and will be 
will be regraded along uh, the damage section. Um, the problem that we had with this uh, this application was that the docks that were aligned were well within the repairing rights of the of the neighbor. And uh, I, I, you know, uh, Azure, if you want to, uh, you know, review what uh, what that proposal was about, that's really when you showed us the diagram last last month. We did notice that that dock was far an extension, probably maybe about 16 or so feet into the repairing rights of the neighbor. Uh, uh, right, and uh, so during the last meeting, hi, Azure uh, Sleicher from Race Coastal Engineering for the record, um, uh, you had asked that we um, show the uh, extension of the property lines out into the water. Our original drawing set did not um, do that. And so um, we we did that upon our official submission to, to DEEP with the COP application. Uh, and so this drawing here shows um, the extension of the property line uh, and um, the dock does extend uh, over over that property line out in the water. Um, we did coordinate with the neighbor, the applicants did, and and received a letter of no objection, which was uh, submitted to DEEP uh, as part of that application process. And uh, I submitted it to uh, a copy of that to the uh, Harbor Management Commission earlier uh, today. So Amelia has that for the record. Um, and so with um, with the letter of no objection from the neighbors, the state uh, intends to, to move forward with approval of the COP application. Um, and the um, the Army Corps uh, also issued um, a confirmation that this is uh, self-verification under their general permit. No further action is required on behalf of the applicant with the Army Corps. All right, well, if I may, I'd like to read, just for the sake of the Commission's uh, viewpoint, as a letter that we received from DEP regarding this application and uh, their uh, approval to move forward uh, with, with that application, despite the fact that you know we have, uh, contrary to, as far as the Harbor Management Plan is concerned, as far as uh, repairing rights, but you, you are correct that apparently there was information from the neighbor, was it 24 Valley Road, that uh, there's no objection to, to having the, that dock on, on, their, on their property. Uh, uh, wait, uh, I just want to back up. It's not on their property. It's <laughs> in possibly in the repairing area, but not on the property. So. <laughs> there's a big difference. I'm sorry, no, no, sorry. What is on their property is the anchorage. That, 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 that is correct. Okay, so I, I stand corrected on that. It was an anchorage line that is definitely on their property. And so with that, I'd just like to read into the record uh, with regard to a letter that we was received from Brian uh, Golubruski, uh on, on this particular project. And just bear with me for a minute. It says, I hope this email finds you well. Uh, Sue Jacobson forwarded uh, to me your comments regarding the consistency with the Harbor Management Plan. Uh, regarding the 25 foot setback from the property lines here again is a relevant policy is a relevant policy from the plan with reference to the Corps engineer guidelines that calls for a 25 foot setback. We understand that these are guidelines and not regulations and in such instances and with certain narrow lots for instance for example it's not possible to provide 25 feet but there should be applied unless there are compelling reasons otherwise, and those compelling reasons are subject to the commission's evaluation on a case-by-case -case basis. And so what he puts down is this from chapter three, he points out, uh, that's his, we, it's 5.3, and this is the carbon management plan, as is to reduce potential adverse impacts on navigation resulting from the construction of new, and this is that's a key, the key word here is new or extended in-water structures, design guidelines established by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and adopted by the guidelines by the Harbor Management Commission for placement of fixed and floating structures in navigable waters should be considered by the Harbor Management Commission in its review of proposed in-water structures. In the absence of compelling reasons to the contrary, including uh, the need to protect valuable coastal resources, new or extended in-water structures should be cons uh, consistent with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers guidelines. And it says C1133 and the guidelines for placement of fixed and floating structures in navigable waters, et cetera, et cetera. He points out, he says, I have considered your comments and respectively disagree that the retention of the pre-1980 dock at 26 Valley Road is inconsistent with the uh, NAW Harbor Management section mentioned above. And he points out first, this is not, and he can indicates, expresses, this is not a new or extended dock. 
That was one point because that was in the plan. I agree with it. So I wouldn't be applying the uh, those sections of the Harbor Management Plan. But with that said, the dock does not meet the 25. Uh, I'm sorry, the dock does not meet right meet the 25 foot offset to the apparent littoral lines between 24 and 26 Valley Road. The fixed portion, and again, that's a com it's the fixed portion he's going by, not the floating portion. You're going by the fixed portion of the dock is within 23 plus or minus feet of the property line. Uh, let's see, of the property line uh, and the floating portions based on my approximation of the littoral line perpendicular from the mean high water to fairway channel between 26 and 24 Valley Road, which he, point, he shows a red line on his diagram, are 16 plus or minus feet from the apparent littoral line. The landward portion of the Southern General, uh, of the Southern Anchorage line is clearly uh, on or slightly over the line in accordance with the eligibility criteria of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer and the uh, CTR, uh, and CTRGP, which stands for the uh, Regional General Permit uh, Activity 4. Uh, I did get no objection email from Paul or Jen Wagner, the owners of 24 Valley Road. The 24 Valley Road property does not currently have a dock, but has over 300 linear feet of shoreline. So I concluded that the 24 Valley Road had ample area to wharf out without any navigable uh, conflict with the existing dock at 26 Valley Road. So that's that's the comment that we got. So so under those circumstances, you know, again, what we're doing, and we did get a response from the our Army Corps of, of I'm sorry, from DEP with regard to our comment. Uh, and again, they did respond to us uh, with uh, is what pretty much what we certainly require, why they're taking a, an opposite action. Because this is what the commission has to deal with, uh, with inconsistencies from here on in, as far as the plan is concerned. We're trying to be very consistent with the plan, but it's up to the DEP to make the final judgment as far as whether our our recommendation is falls into line or it doesn't fall into line, and why they are disagreeing with it. And they provided us with that disagreement. So this is where we're at right now, Alan. Jeff, well, th this is. Again, we can talk a lot about this, but it, it, it sets up some interesting precedents here. We, we talked with Deep about this at, at length, and, it, and there's another there's another property in the application that's before us that has <clears throat> potential littoral rights conflict as well. Right. When when we first talked with Deep, they they indicated that they were willing to allow a, a, a in water structure to encroach on a neighbor's property. If in their judgment that neighbor who was encroached upon still had had a adequate space to build that, its own, his or her own water access structure, and I think that's a real ba bad precedent to set. They, they they referred us to a to a uh, a case that went to the Connecticut Supreme Court, actually in Rowayton, that talked about uh, littoral rights conflicts, and they at first deep at first said that that was a that was precedent for allowing a dock to go into, into a neighbor's property. But it wasn't that. Uh, we, we discussed it later with Deep. That, that case had to do with adverse possession because the Supreme Court did rule that the littoral right is an exclusive property right. But in the case in the Five Mile River, a neighbor had for many years had, 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 had a, a dock, occupied a dock that was built with a permit in the neighbor's property. And then since a certain amount of time passed and that neighbor hadn't complained about it, 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 it under ad, adverse possession law, it, it, that, that neighbor acquired some of the littoral rights of the property owner. But here, the, 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 the situation is, or plus, but also the one qualifying part of this is that the neighbor has, has expressed no objection to it. Right. Um, that, that, I, I think that that's probably something that should be then or considered to be put on the land record for for a future owner that that uh, that that that, as, as, that aspect of the of the littoral rights has been been given up, but as far as agreeing to deep, Deep's argument that they can approve a structure in, in a neighbor's a neighbor's littoral area, if the neighbor still has adequate room for access, I think we should object strongly to that because that's that that's not protecting uh, property owners' littor littoral rights. But no, that's, that's, just my, that's my opinion. No, I agree with you, Jeff, because it's setting a, it's setting a definite precedent. And they're under the uh, argument that as long as the applicant, I mean, sorry, as long as the person whose uh, littoral rights have been infringed has adequate access to the harbor, then yeah. it's okay. 
and the beast, we're going to see that we're going to see that also and it's going to come up to it's going to come to the the uh, the uh, commission again when they uh, when they review the Overton's property down on down on Seaview Avenue uh there's also an encroachment on the littoral rights of one of the boat clubs in town uh but again as long as the boat club has adequate access to the water they'll probably go along with uh, having that infringement or an infraction or that uh, overlap in the littoral rights so so the question is what, what sort of comment to make now to deep about I, th this? I think we still need to be consistent with the harbor management plan and it's up to the dep to make the final uh, final decision but we i think we as far as i'm concerned right now we need to stick to our guns with regard to what the harbor management plan says because that's a plan that has been agreed to by the state also by the city and until things are changed with regard to that that comment, I think we ought to stick to our guns as far as what we're doing and being consistent with the plan. And mm -hmm. and it's up to, and again, the DEP has has made judgment that it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. But and yeah. this is these are the things that work the inconsistencies that we're going to have to deal with moving forward as a commission. Because mm -hmm. somebody's going to say, well, geez, you allow Twenty Six Valley Road to extend it. You know, why why can't we do the same thing? Is so, there any 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 further comment? Yeah, well, I'd, I'll make a couple observations. One, I believe I, I can see, you know, there's a, what it was it, a 25 foot, you know, offset. I can see granting lenience to that if there is plenty of room on the adjoining property. That's what the DEP said. That's correct. Right. So if you went, if you were within five feet of it, you're still on your property, you're still within your littoral rights, you know, and I, I just read, just read the email that with the exchange between the neighbors and you know, they, they did make this statement to the, you know, the, the owner of the dock made the statement that, that the dock is not on your property, which, you know, um, doesn't entirely reflect, accurately reflect the situation. So whatever the, the Wagners have agreed to, I, they, they aren't, they aren't agreeing, they aren't agreeing, at least in terms of what was written to them, of having an anchor on their property and the dock impinging on their littoral rights. Now those are Laura Lee words. And not every I didn't know what littoral rights was two years ago, but but I'm fairly familiar with it now. So, um, well, the, the, you so know, I, I was sort of agreeing with what you're saying, John. But based on those based on those two additional two points, this this goes back also, Chris, to uh, uh, years ago when we were advocating uh, joint docks between two between neighbors uh, uh, two, uh, two neighbors that want to put a dock in. We agreed upon just maybe having one dock, but now again. There's some sort of legal issue with regard to uh, not only repairing rights, but going on someone else's property. Where's the dock going to be? But then for future deed of that, if the person moves, that something should be in the deed with regard to uh, uh, allowing that that uh, joint possession to to be uh, to, to, to to be uh, allowed. And that's the same thing here too. So I think somewhere along the line, some information has got to be put in uh, into there. Well, I don't know uh, that that uh, there is a there is a an okay to have this dock on your property if they decide to move. <laughs> you know, I, you know. So, any event, that's what we're dealing with right now. So, <clears throat> so is there a a, a motion, John? We look to uh, John and uh, Chris are the um, resident experts as the application review committee members present. But is there um, a, a motion? You, well, well, I go on, Chris, if you want. Well, I was I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the the business is now is responding to Deep's letter. Well, Deep's letter, but to the to the project itself, I, as I said. Uh, but uh, uh, do we, we vote on the project before? I'm trying to remember what, what was our last oh, action. We did. We tabled it. Just we tabled it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think that the the concern that we have is that it, you set a precedent for allowing for, for Deep to to allow a structure to encroach in a neighbor's property with with based on the argument that the neighbor still has opportunity for access to to the uh, to, to the littoral area and, and the, other, the other thing that deep did is interesting when they read the we provided the policies of the plan having to do with respecting littoral rights and and uh, and, and and the setback but they they interestingly said well th those apply to newer extended structures right so that was i asked you to say to watch the that's the operative word was new yes. and they used that in, they used that word that we put in the as new this is not a new project so they said, well it's it's, a, it's an existing structure that's not permitted so you you can argue yeah. that but uh, well, so it's, 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 it, it is a replacement kind 
Yeah. Well, we're going around in circles on this as far as that's concerned. It's, just, it's a, you know, certainly fait accompli, but I think somewhere along the line, <clears throat> we just have to make just uh, to our statement because we have to be consistent with the plan as it, as it stands. I mean, the project, obviously, uh, as you're going to move forward, uh, you have, you have that, you have that uh, okay by the DEP. And uh, certainly I agree with the aspect of <clears throat> putting float stops on the bottom of this dock here to keep it off the substrate. So it has all good qualities. Let me put it that way, as far as protecting the harbor. What's our policy, John, with respect to a, 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 <clears throat> where the neighbor issues a statement of no objection? And well, as, Chris, as Chris said, that, that maybe doesn't quite say no objection to the dock, but uh, what, what, what's, what would be our policy in, in acting on something like this when there's a statement from the neighbor? Would, would we would we request or require that that be shown that that be added to the land records? I, I as, think yeah. As, if I recall, Jeff, I think that's what we've that's the comment that we've made uh, in the past from the other from other applications that we that we received that the to indicate that yes, the neighbor has no obje, uh, you know, objection to this this project moving forward themselves and no objection for the uh, 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 that dock or any part of that dock resting on their property. But again. What happens in the near future if they decide to sell? So all of a sudden, the new new owner comes in and says, "Hey, I've got a structure on my piece of property here. I think you're gonna have to remove it." Type thing. So, uh, you know, I, I think I think somewhere along the line, we need to be consistent with our our judgment on that. So, uh, can we craft that into a motion? Uh, that's. A, <laughs> um, I think we can move on. I think you started. Well, we, could, we, could, we could transmit the concerns that were expressed by the commission tonight, having to do with the yeah. encroachment into littoral rights and, and express objections to issuance of a permit with deep just determines that the property encroached upon and still has access. And if there is a, a specific statement of no objection to the by the adjoining property owner, that should be reflected on the land records or included on the land records. I'll, I'll, but, but another, you know, it, it, but we, we're not we're not stepping away from the setback policies of the harbor management plan. Well, that's correct, and I think we should maintain that and and keep that consistency with all of our applications <clears throat> until until perhaps we can either uh, uh, the DEP helps us adjust that and agrees to that. But I don't know how you would put these qualifying statements into a into a form of a policy <clears throat> because this is done on a case by case basis, as they as, certainly as we indicate. You know, so so we can't have every case uh, included in the harbor management plan, but we need some certainly general leeway to to use those as guidelines as to what we approve of. But Chris, going back to your comment on the letter from the neighbor, you're saying that wasn't specific to the littoral rights area. Well, the the the, the twenty six the twenty six Valley Road people said, the, "Do you have any objection to the dock for replacing it? It's not on your property." the drawings were shared with them as well okay. so they've they've seen that i mean you know i wouldn't i wouldn't take that email to court okay <laughs> did the did the neighbors know where the littoral rights were and know where the littoral boundaries were that was it well again i i would just argue that the littoral boundaries are not defined by the pure extension of the property lines, especially in this particular, if you look at the GIS map that I have up on my screen here, extension of these two property lines uh, are the two red lines. So for 26 Valley Road, they converge and it's extremely small. Whereas if you do that same extension of property line, then here's the riparian area, littoral area of 24 Valley Road versus that of 26. Right. Now, in cases where you have an irregular shoreline, there are different ways to determine riparian areas. And, and I think one would argue that in the case of 26 Valley Road, that this would not be appropriate and that it would be more if this center area of, of the water body is more of the channel, it would be more perpendicular mm -hmm. to the channel and probably open it up that way. And then the lines would go for this subsequent property down here, you know, well, something along those lines, right? 
yeah, we're well aware well aware of the inconsistencies with littoral boundaries, especially when you're dealing with the contour of the shoreline. Uh, we've dealt with that with many other applications in the past, where you look at the curvature of the land, you'd say, oh, gee, that littoral right should, boundary should go here, but it goes in a different in a different direction, sort of sort of opposite what you would think it would. So we understand the inconsistencies with the littoral boundary lines. So so whatever they are, they they that's what they are. So. Un until some... yeah no exactly and 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 so it, you know again it's not for me it's not for you know this, the commission yeah. you know obviously I, my understanding it's a, for a court of law to determine those riparian boundaries so again it's it's a presumption that the existing dock is over certainly again one can say that that anchor and that's an easy thing to move if if, if ever required to um you know but uh, you know i think it's still you know a, a bit presumptuous to to say that you know the floating dock itself is is you know in their repairing area it may be but we don't know for sure well they, they're pointing out that it's not an impediment to their to their meaning the wagner's ability to wharf out or to or to, to have access to uh to uh to, to water so and, um, and i think i think the wagners would agree because if they were to ever put a dock i don't think it would be anywhere close to that location of, of the dock that's near 26 that's I, I, probably I, the worst place and you I know saw, along that entire stretch to put I saw, it i saw their property yeah and that would be the worst place to put it I mean, in that region over there i i, I yeah. agree you know so in any event but i think yeah, uh, and, and guys i'm not here to argue with you you know i i understand your position no. and whatever you whatever you know um response you need to send to deep um you know obviously that that's you know the commission's right so i just um, wanted to present the information you know you asked us last time to you know to try and get uh, this information to you and i did no i pre I, pre I appreciate that as you as i said we're not we're not here to uh uh to uh, uh to run roughshod over the project it you know it is what it is i understand that we're just here to make sure that the judgment and, and and the information and the recommendations that we make are consistent with the harbor management plan and that because we have to deal with those i guess the the um uh alternate uh, uh understood yeah uh, by, by the by the harbor by the by the dep when we deal with future applications mm -hmm. and that's that's the and that's the problem i have we seem to be the recipient of of uh maybe uh you know these property owners when they don't get perhaps the uh, type hear the type of information that they they want to hear. So uh, so now we have to uphold the policy of the plan to protect yes. the littoral rights of all the property owners. You that's, know. that's correct, and that's and, why and that's, what, that's what has to be made clear here. Yes, that, we, and that, and that's can, basically we can approve it, but we sh we should express our our concerns as as discussed tonight. I absolutely agree with that. Anyway. I agree. Uh, so, Joe Joe has uh, his hand up. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe. Yeah, just a quick thought. If any of you have the Google Earth photograph for this area, mm. you, it, it makes a lot of sense to have that dock the way it is. And then 24 Valley Road, they'd have to be out of their minds to put a dock closer to 26 Valley Road. Mm -hmm. And the present image shows low tide. And if any of you have that, um on your computer um i i think it'll make a lot of sense because there you go uh you don't have the present one uh, here we go that's far yep that's better but it's not the most recent uh it's the most i have in my google earth okay all of this or where the arrow is um or or I'm indicating on here you can't we can't see we can't see your comments Joe on okay. this um maybe as you can maybe move her move that little what area you're talking about or what area okay all there is in that area is a little trickle of water at low tide and I when I say a little trickle that's 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 an un, that's an understatement mm -hmm. um I've been back there at low tide the only thing you can get partially back there is a kayak, and that only goes up to a little bit beyond where the uh, Village Creek area has their marina. Mm. And the rest of it is mud. And the only thing, you know, they can they can park a boat there, but it's going to be sitting on the bottom. 
Well, Joe, I think, you know, the point is well taken. I know that I'm sure the people at 24 Valley Road would not put a put a dock in that location. I'm sure it'll be well engineered uh, uh, where, where, where they want to have that dock. But right now, the dock that we're looking at right now is the current dock in question. Is that correct? Right. The one that's the one that's sitting down there in the middle of right, right, right here. That's correct. Yeah. But I think we're talking about the principle, though, Joe. Not yeah, that's not yeah. Oh, I, I understand. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and that, that's what, that's what we're considering. And I so I said, oh, Azure, I hope you understand where we're coming from as far as that st that standpoint is concerned as well. So yeah, but, no, I, I, absolutely. You know, so uh, you know, as I said, uh, any, anything that deals with uh, uh, improving the substrate around there, uh, again, the commission is all for that, and I'm sure the shellfish commission would be for that as well to prevent any scalding and you know scouring of the bottom of the of the, uh, the, the substrate. And uh, but again, it's it's just a matter of the location and the repairing rights of the of the neighbor, and that's all we're that's so that we're concerned about. So, so with the with the the consensus be to, to transmit to deep the concerns that the commission has discussed tonight with respect to upholding the policies of the harbor management plan and if there is an agreement with the property owner specific to this it should be reflected on the land on the land yes i'm going to make that as a proposal for a motion why don't we just talk about this being a special case uh, i don't think it's you know it, 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 well it it, it, it well i don't know how it's a special case uh, well we're going to have a separate. Oh, it is. If you look at the property, if you look at the, what we're looking at now, it is. And, and I think the commission has to have the flexibility as well to, when there's an unusual situation, to be a little flexible. Yeah, but what do we what do we catalog this under? Special cases? I don't, I don't understand. Do you know? I mean, I, I, uh, under under you catalog it under your reasonable opinion as a commission. Okay. I mean, that would be my view. I think. I will, well, it's just basically we're just going to get a letter out to the DEP indicating our thoughts as far as the repairing rights are concerned, and they're going right. to they're going to go ahead with their. And then again, I think it's 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 fair to say, and I think it's 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 uh, reasonable to say that that for any future uh, use of that area, that the that that be reflected in perhaps in the deed of the of, of the of new property owner. If if they so wish to to sell, that's all we're saying that that uh, that a current owner shouldn't make the decision for a future owner i don't That's know but I, 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 I don't, i'm not a lawyer to, to 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 make you know how that would how that would work or stand up in court i don't know so anyway so I, as i said what we talked about earlier i'd like to move forward with that uh, recommendation or that as you said that motion could you restate the motion? I second that all right jeff you want to just mm -hmm. That we would transmit to deep the, the, the concerns that and the concerns that the commission expressed tonight and and the uh, and as with regard to maintaining the consistency with the repairing the support support for the littoral right the littoral rights of adjoining property owners is expressed in the harbor management plan and if there is an agreement between the adjoining property owners for an encroachment into the the joiner's littoral area that that should be reflected in in the land records um that that's that's i think that's it jeff yeah well, are, are, whole, are we trying are we at the point where we're finding this consistent with the harbor management plan or are we just no, we it's, no it's inconsistent with it's the it's harbor well, no, that's plan. what i'm trying to say so do we need to state that I, I think so, as far as, yeah. as far as that's concerned. But with the with the caveat, or with the idea, or the other, as I said, the, the caveat as far as the, the recommendations that we, we well, just I, so then so let me yeah. absent of a of a of a of a of a deeded a deeded transfer of, of riparian rights, this pro, this dock is not consistent with our management plan. Yeah. I, I think that's very good. I don't. Because, yeah. Because deep 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 looked at the plan and made a different determination. So I, I, and I don't think that we would agree with Deep's determination. And they have the right to disagree with ours. That's but that's basically what the Harbor right. Management Plan is all about. We make a recommendation. Right. That Deep should at least listen to that recommendation. And then if they feel that an opposite action should be taken or a different action should be taken, all they do is to write a letter indicate and explaining to us for future reference as to why our, our judgment was an error of theirs. And they've done that. They, they they certainly gave us that that explanation here. Well, I don't know what more we can ask for. Right. So, so is there a motion being made? Yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm making a motion. 
absent 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 a easement of littoral rights this dock is not consistent with the harbor management plan due to its impingement on the, the neighbors um the float and the anchors impingement on the, the, the neighbor's littoral rights. That's very good. All right, we have all those in favor. Aye. I'm going to abstain because I know this. I know the owner. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lori, for that. So, uh, how many in favor? John, Allen, Chris, Mike, Mike. Mike. Jeff? Yes. So we, so we have a motion that's passed. All right, thank you. Thank May you. I ask one follow-up question just for my own education? So does the letter from the neighbor not have, like if this happens again with somebody else and the neighbor understands and says, it's okay with me, do we take that into consideration or do we say, we take it against no, because no, we take into consideration, Lori, because the, the owner had made uh, certainly a, a judgment that there's no problem with that. However, carrying that one step further, if that owner decides to sell that piece of property, that it be reflected in the deed that you okayed this, but maybe the new owner might not. Yeah. That's, okay. that's all the same. And I think, yep. I think that, that's to me, that makes it very clear that, okay, you, you've agreed to have that on your property, but when it becomes not your property, you know. You don't have that right to make that decision. Right. All right, moving forward. Um, our third application is uh, for a commercial aquaculture kelp farm. Uh, this is a uh, standing application that the, the Blooms have put forward. And uh, they propose to establish two lots of a 500 foot of eight. There could be eight uh, strings of 500 long uh, long lines for, for sugar kelp in the Long Island Sound off of Sheffield Island. And it's, this is a seasonal activity with uh, a, a estimated start and stop dates of 11, uh, actually November 1st, uh, 23 through June 1st of uh, uh, 2024. Uh, and as I pointed out, this is a uh, reapplication uh, for establishment of a kelp farm, which we've had agreed to uh, in the past. And uh, I can read, for example, the the uh, consideration that we had given them uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, when they first proposed this project. And I hope the Shellfish Commission would, would maybe chime in on this as well, because we looked at this from the standpoint of water quality, as well as in the position of these lines uh, in that area where it might affect uh, boating, et cetera. But this is well out of the area, and maybe Joe and maybe Steve could probably chime in on this, well out of the area where any reasonable boating activity would take place, uh, perhaps because of the uh, the rocky uh, rocky uh, area there. But as far as the use of kelp, and I guess it could be a mixed emotion about it, that's concerned, a mixed opinion, that uh, certainly kelp in that area would basically cleanse, uh, you know, the water environment as far as picking up picking up nutrients uh, in, in that area. And I know that's an area that that fish do uh, quite often like to feed around uh, as far as the substrate is concerned. Uh, but then again. Uh, there's also the fall, the droppage of that of that kelp that goes down to the bottom, uh, which can also uh, starve the bottom of oxygen too. So I'm, I, I'd wait to someone who is an expert on that, and, and maybe after years of presence of this kelp farm in that area, what that would mean to that to that. But right now, let me read. This is the North Harbor Management Commission considered the applicant's proposal. This is this is of two years ago, following the issuance of the uh, Long Island uh, the Long Island Sound. Uh, well, notice is during its meeting on this is 2017. The North Harbor Management Commission approved the motion to find the proposal consistent with the Harbor Management Plan with the understanding that the proposed plan for location of the aquaculture structures has been prepared uh, to the satisfaction of the Connecticut Bureau of Aquaculture. And then in addition, the North Harbor Management Commission recommends that the applicant and the North Shellfish Commission reach an agreement concerning the time period during which the aqua gear, aquaculture gear may be maintained in place. And I'm hoping that that June, uh, that November to June section, Steve, has been uh, looked at by both, of, uh, both in your commission to say that that was okay. Yeah, so it's my understanding that this application is a formality and it is a simple change from the former a uh, person who ran it directly to Captain Bloom. It is still his gear. It's still his boats. It's the identical location. So uh, we uh, completed some paperwork on that. Um, we received some more we need to get out, but uh, 
we see this as a, essentially a, a non-application, but one that had to be done legally. There are no changes. Jeff. Well, since, since we looked at that, I know that the Bureau of Aquaculture in, in approving these structures um, wishes to require or includes a condition that if the, if, the, if the operation goes out of business, the owner of the structure will be required to remove, remove the structures from the water rather than just, just leave them there. Steve, Steve, is that your understanding that that's a standard requirement now? It's not, but I think that makes sense. I, I, I think I think it may be a standard requirement with the with the federal permit, but but it hasn't been in with this with the in, in the with the state of Connecticut permit. So we might want to recommend that because I think the Bureau of Aquaculture has, has urged us to recommend uh, such such a condition. I think that's right. A, Derelict, Derelict gear is a very big problem. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the operation ceases to function, the applicant will be required to remove the the uh, the structures or the. I think it's an excellent the, point. That's right. You know, if somebody puts something in place, they should be able to, they should be yeah. to remove it. That's correct. And those lines are not, those are not, these are not short lines. These are, with, these are 500, they're 500 feet, you know. I think there's actually a proposed state bill. Uh, Along with buoys. That, that would proposed. require the, the, an applicant for, or the operator of these, these facilities to post a bond that would be, that would, could be used to cover the removal, but that, that, that law didn't pass. But I think we can still make the recommendation they should be. I think that's a, I think it's a wise wise move. Mm -hmm. right. Steve, would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, with that with that, I guess do you, uh, we again? Does the commission feel we can move forward with this? Is finding it consistent with our management plan? Uh, with the again the caveat that we added that uh, uh, as far as the well the selfish has made selfish commission has made their comments so we have that and that the gear would be removed. Uh, in a timely manner, according to recommendation and uh, uh, agreement with the Shellfish Commission, as well as um, the removal, once if the operation goes out of business, that they are responsible for removal of that equipment, uh, because there's, there's several mushrooms, there's about 500, I think there's about two or three 500 pound mushrooms that are be, you know, located down there holding this, uh, this facility in place. So, so there's certainly uh, a lot of equipment that's, that's had managed down there. So I think Certainly a good right suggestion. Anybody have any comment on that? Wow. All right, with all those edit all those in favor. All right. What's the oh I'm sorry. well no. again we, we, the... we find the kelp farm proposal consistent with the harbor management plan and then as I said that that any uh future uh uh, removal, any removal that is required that the, the uh, operation goes out of business, that they be responsible for removal of that equipment in the, in the north rivers. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's great. Let's move. All right. So moving. Same. <coughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Hal. And I checked, don't worry, it's not on top of the Eversource cables, which are right next to it. <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking, there, there's lots of Eversource cables, folks, we're, you know. That's right. Well, I, no, I don't think there's the, uh, with, with the uh, Manresa, you talk about the Manresa? Cable? The Manresa yes. to Long yeah, Island yeah. cables go right next to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they're open, it's an open trench. It's about, right? yeah, those, yeah, those were plowed in, I think, yeah. Yeah, well, I think they're they were, they're were, they were open trench, but they were allowed to fill in gradually. <laughs> yeah, that's why it grows so well over there. Well, anyway, the next application is at for 18 Burwell Street. Uh, this is a pre-application, and the applicant, uh, which is the Sound Engineering Associates, on behalf of Alexander, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the word, but is Sminick and uh, Al, uh, Andrew uh, Kilborn proposes to retain uh, and maintain an existing seawall. And construct a private dock. Uh, the proposed dock will involve construction of a four foot by uh, five foot, four foot wide by a 62 foot pier, fixed pier, with a 3.5 wide times 30 foot gangway attached to a five foot by four foot landing dock with an eight foot by 12.5 floating dock configuration. Uh, installation will uh, initially require a barge mounted uh, pile driver for placement of the timber piles. And the dock pier, deck, and gangway will be fabricated off-site 
and installed in situ uh, via, large, via work barge uh, during high tide. Um, one of the questions, this was a uh, response, an application in response to a notice of violation uh, that was uh, issued by DEP, uh, where the, uh, the DEP requested, since this, this original dock and the wall was, um, was uh, uh, not uh, under, um, uh, did not, there was no application for that. And uh, so the DEP did issue a, uh, uh, a response for them to, uh, to uh, change the, either retain the wall or retain the dock or replace it or uh, maintain it with, it with a new application. And I think that's where the applicant is right now is, is uh, dealing with this. It's, a, it's in the pre-application phase. And uh, so uh, they're moving forward with re keeping the wall, retaining the wall. But then I wanted to ask, is it Mr. Bartholomew? Is that? Yeah. Uh, De, De Bartolomeo. Oh, De, De Bartolomeo. I'm sorry. Thank that's, you. That's I, fine. Being Italian, I should have. I should have. I should have pronounced that correctly myself. <laughs> you know. You're not the first, and you won't be the You're last. The second students of Italian, they do, you know, they, they don't know. Yeah. Well, they know it's yeah. Anyway, so so yeah. The the question I have is, uh, the new dock proposal is going to supersede the the existing dock that's there, correct? Because the size. <laughs> The size of the original proposal that was in the notice of violation bears nowhere near the size of what you're planning to put in there now. So the old dock has, uh, as part of an agreement with the DEP in, in, in processing the notice of violation, uh, the old dock has already been removed, is no longer there, okay? So they're basically starting from a clean slate at this point, okay? and. Quite frankly, there was wasn't much. It was more of a remnants of a dock than it was really a a, a dock. There, it was it was not in good shape. the uh, The applicants are new property owners. Uh, they would like to, you know, uh, really develop this property so that they can use, you know, access it uh, when the tide is right. Uh, so, you know, I. If if you like, I can answer questions. I can go through the drawing set if you if you want. Yeah, maybe um, you can sort of present the drawings. Uh, sure. we, we did send them out to the application review committee, but if you have a, I think, uh, 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 sorry, um, uh, Amelia could probably give Mr. Bartolomeo a uh, De Bartolomeo the access to the screen sharing. Okay. See yep, you, can, you should be able to share now. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So the set of drawings uh, that should be on your screen now, uh, just jump right over to um, Did we lose him? Yeah, we don't see it. We think we lost him. Yeah, he's uh, here. He's just you. muted and not sharing his screen. He's yeah. yeah. muted right now. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, give me one second to bring that back up. <clears throat> okay. All right. I hope that's visible now. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll jump to, over to uh, the applicable uh, drawings. That's where we are in the world. Uh, Assessor's map here. This is the existing parcel. It's at the foot of Burwell Street. There's an existing dwelling. Here's the seawall. Let me, I'll zoom in here a little bit. Here's the seawall uh, that's in question. This was determined to be a pre-1995 seawall, making it eligible for uh, being authorized under a COP. Um, and the old dock is not even shown there because it was taken out before we even put these drawings together, okay? And as everyone knows, there's 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 a tidal vegetation along the shoreline here. There's some invasive uh, Phragmites in on on the um, southern end of the property that we're going to propose to eradicate. Um, and uh, uh, also, one thing that I want to bring to the commission's attention is that um, as as uh, John stated very early in our uh, meeting that. Uh, some of these applications change uh, prior to submittal. Um, we were going to propose that we increase the seawall height uh, by about a foot over here just to level off the grade in the backyard. Um, so that will be pretty much the uh, 
that's that's a change that's already been been made underway and I wanted to bring that to the commission's attention. <laughs> um, so moving on to uh, to where the um, hold on moving on to where the uh, the dock goes uh, right there and it's in the same proximity as the as the uh, original dock. Um, we shifted it over uh, slightly. It was it was further north uh, on the seawall, but we we moved it away from where the deck is right now, uh, just so we can have enough access around the around the deck there. Um, so it does extend out past the uh, uh, the tidal vegetation to a gangway and a small dock. Um, we're going to propose that the the decking here be uh, through flow decking to allow sunlight to penetrate. <clears throat> and uh, move on here, here's a section through um, existing conditions and proposed conditions where we're getting to be our required better than five foot clear off the grade with five and a half feet clear off the grade, which is sort of pushing this um, deck up to elevation 10 and a half the grade right now is very low, it's below six. Uh, so they're, they're, I imagine that there's flooding on this property from time to time. Um, so we're bringing the deck up to its appropriate level for permitting. And uh, uh, that's essentially it. There's a section through. And, let, me, uh, let, me go, let me go back to the decking area. Is there a ruling as far as, you, you're trying to get spacing in between those. Is there a ruling that you have to follow with regard to the distance to allow a certain amount of light to go through, especially- There used to be, there used to be, uh, the DEEP used to request that we, you have an inch between deck boards. You still maintain, because you're going over, you're going over, you know, certainly sea grasses and-, and, and whatnot. Yeah, and 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 I, I don't have it prepared. I, I wish I, I, I did, but I, I have a, um, there's a product that's called um, uh, flow through, uh, yeah, uh, flow through or through flow decking. It's a it's a composite deck material uh, mm -hmm. that's that I've had a lot of success with. The DEP likes it, and it allows sunlight to penetrate it. Oh. And it doesn't have the um, the problem with open spaces in the deck boards is is that it just I don't know. It's it's not it's it can be cumbersome for walking on uh, uh, spaces that that wide. Uh, so, so, um, so this product is very nice, and and um, uh, I can forward that to the commission for review if if they like it. Just that's, it's going to take me. That's the type of material you're putting on top of the top of the, the gangway. That's correct. Yeah, on the uh, on the deck, not on okay. the gangway. I'm sorry, on the deck. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I have a question. If you can go to the section A, the next sheet. Yeah, zoom in on the on the dock itself. No, nope. uh, hold on. So what? So we're yes. Yeah, so we've got um, uh, framing underneath this float to allow uh, eighteen inches of clearance on here, so the dock is not resting on the mud. Okay, so it sits on it sits on not on float float stops, but on cribbing. Yes. Okay, now that's good because that it, it, you could have a you could have two foot long float stops and they just sink right in the mud there. Yes. Um, uh, yes, I, that's that's been my experience as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there any other comments commissioners want to make? If I may, Mister. I, I, I'll add. I'll add one thing. Listening to your um, commentary on uh, littoral boundaries, while while I was listening to that, I went on my on the AutoCAD, and what I did was I extended this property line out mm -hmm. to here to see what that distance was, <laughs> and it's uh, it's 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 twenty six feet. <laughs> Magic number. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were going to say 25.2. Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say 24.2. Yeah. Yeah. We got to, you can't round that off, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Round it up. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, there's a few more things that we want to bring into, into the fore here, uh, Tim, and that is your requirement for work barges in that area. Sure. And uh, so, so we have a certainly a consideration of, uh, of uh, awareness of having work barges in an area. And I understand that you're going to be doing the construction offsite, and then you're going to be uh, barging the uh, the dock and the deck and the the floats uh, on on barge and then in place putting them in place during the high tide certainly high tide mark we do require uh, uh, coordination with our with our harbor master as far as the placement of any any vessels any work vessels in the area sure and because the, the because the barges can cause just as much damage as any dock can can cause as far as the uh, scouring of the you know the substrate and the, you know, so so that's certainly an, uh, an additional requirement that we're going to uh, sort of request on the on our that's uh, that's no that's no problem is any anybody have any further comment than uh, jeff yes i'm sorry yeah tim was was a was there a consent order involved with the notice of violation or a no there was not it was an it was a, a, a notice of violation with a um correspond email correspondence we provided a timeline um, and if you give me a moment, I'll bring that timeline up um, uh, that we would we would file uh, this pre-application material by a certain date and get the application in. Um, I, I actually probably have to dig it up in an email, uh, but uh, but but the we're trying to get the application submitted by mid-May if 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 memory serves. Do, do, do you have a drawing that shows what uh, other properties have in terms of docks or water access structures in the in the area? Uh, I can bring it up on uh, on Google Earth here. If you give me one moment. So is, um, is this similar? I'm just wondering how this relates to other. Yeah, there are there are docks uh, in the area there. Um, and um, I'll share my screen with that. Okay, so there's the property. Um, there we go. Uh, I cut that. This be an issue on on my end because I've been uh, can't seem to bring this up. Give me one second. Is that screen up? Can you see the image? Yes. Yes. There we are. Okay. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit more. Okay, this is the property here. You can see this is when the tide is out, obviously. Uh, and there are docks in this area here. There's a dock right here. There's a dock right here on the opposite side. Uh, so it's you know it's fairly common to have, and that's I think that's the extent of it. Um, oh, and there's one up here in this corner. So, um, so I I hope I answered your question, Jeff. Yes. Um, I I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. This is a pre-application, so it's it's yes. the, the the commission's. Normal yeah. motion would be to have no objection to it proceeding to the full permit that's application. That's correct. Um, with the understanding that there was no consent order or fine imposed on this, and that the also I think it's to it's to the applicant's credit that they remove the existing structure that was the source of the of the violation. 
but also that the drawings be be amended as as uh, the applicant just stated to show the extended littoral, the application drawings, the extended littoral property lines and the distance from the proposed structure to that line. That's fine. No problem doing that. Steve, you had a question. Yes, Steve. Yeah, sure. So the Shellfish Commission will certainly ask for a site inspection. And this, uh, to Jeff's point, is a pre-application. It's not a COP. And per earlier points, this is a new or extended structure, which I think merits a site inspection. And I, I feel that the commissions, as a matter of policy, should do this before commenting. Uh, with due respect to Mr. De Bartolomeo, he's an upstanding agent. The only thing that we know about this property is what we're being told by the agent. We haven't seen it ourselves. Well, that's fair. And again, that we maintain our consistency because we've done that. We've done that with the property certainly along where the uh, South Nog Boat Club area was in those that that area right there, um, for uh, to actually have a site visit for you know in situ, to uh, in situ visits. Yes. And they've kindly uh, offered uh, the Shellfish Commission access. So. As sister commissions, that's certainly something we could do at a low tide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. That's good. Um, I'll add to that. There's already been some correspondence for scheduling that at a low tide. Um, and um, uh, I can I will send the date around after after this meeting. I don't have it at my fingertips. Um, but um, uh, but I would, uh, you know, I can be present there. At, to answer any further questions. That's great. So would the, would the commission then hold off on on yes. the, the statement of no objection and we're gonna yeah we will we'll hold off and uh, Tim do you know about when that time will come? Uh, I believe it was very early April, but let me just let me see if I could find it real quick. Um, and uh, I know. Of course, I don't. You might want to stop sharing, Mr. Departo Lameo. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I was sharing everything there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Yeah, I'll have to send it around. I don't want to hold people up on this because I don't have my fingertips. No, thank, thank you very much for that, Tim. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Right. I think, uh, as I said, we'll put that in a wait for your invitation. And uh, I think that would be the end of our application review. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. It was great. Bye. Thank you all. Yeah. The application review committee yields the floor, Mr. Chair. <laughs> wow. Thanks a lot. Uh, I have my chairman's report. It's not, not, not terribly large. Uh, I could go on for hours now, and we'd love to hear all that. I, I just like to say thanks for your confidence in, in me and, and, and Jeff Mangles and, and Laurie Jones to be your, uh, be your officers. Um, we're a commission of nine people with a, 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 some really big goals to achieve according to our Harvard management plan. Um, there's a, a lot we're supposed to be doing for just nine of us. And so uh, the first thing I'd like to ask, I did send out a survey of, of uh, uh, how we're achieving our goals, our 13 goals as a, as a commission, and they only received a handful of, of replies. So. Um, I'd like to know if people didn't want to have time to do that, didn't want to do that. Um, uh, we felt it would be kind of uh, useful in guiding our, uh, where we kind of focus our energies. Uh, anyone have any thoughts about that? Or did everyone get that uh, survey? Yes. I got it. Alan, sorry, I owe you, I owe you a survey, okay. and I was paused too. So, 
I, if you I, can do that, if you said, uh, unless you think there's something, uh, a reason not to do that, it would just be very helpful to see where we think we are and, and uh, give us a, give the leadership a little direction. Yeah, I, I, I will fill that out, Alan. Thanks. It shouldn't take very long, but I think it'd be useful just to, to see what we all think we're doing and, and where we can uh, focus a little more attention. Um, you know, the, I just want to say there's a, a lot of multitask that goes on with, with what everyone here does. I think it's evident uh, just seeing this meeting, how we're all uh, have a, a lot on our plates is, is uh, Harbor commissioners. And so it's, it's easy to get bogged down and, and overwhelmed and we just have to keep you know, dreaming of uh, how much better the Norwalk Harbor can, can be. Um, you know, committee assignments. Uh, I sent them all out to everyone. I hope we, uh, I'll read through them if, uh, and just stop me if there's any uh, questions. Um, you know, finance, I made Chris McDonald of chair there and uh, with Laurie Jones. Uh, and I'll, I'll certainly hang in there with doing reports from uh, uh, the controller's office until somebody wants to take that over. I'm happy to give it up, but I have a, a kind of a, uh, a, uh, a system for doing that. And it goes fairly easily now. Uh, application review, Dr. Pinto does an excellent job there. Mr. Chris McDonald uh, and Matt Gifford. Uh, I put my face in there because I uh, really enjoyed the application review process. So I can be on any uh, committee I want to, and I decided that's where I want to spend some time. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's, it's my kind of uh, kind of thing I'm interested in. Uh, plans and recommendations. Chris yeah. McDonald is going to pick up the chairmanship there with uh, Jeff Mangles and Laurie Jones. Um, mooring in uh, Harbor Safety, uh, Dennis, is, as we know, has uh, stepped down, and Jeff Mangles is going to be the, uh, the, the new chair there, uh, assisted by Matt Gifford. Uh, Bruce Lavallo, uh, Harbor Master, is very much involved with that, is an ex officio uh, member of that organization as well. Um, what I didn't know when I started this is that our, our bylaws require us to have a, a, a representative to the Mayor's Water Quality Committee. Um, and John Crespo, who's been doing that for uh, several years, uh, he has reapplied to be on the commission and he will fill that uh, slot as soon as the, uh, the mayor uh, makes a the council make a reappointment. And our website newsletter, which is our, uh, an outreach uh, area that we, I think we should be giving much more attention to, um, Mike Matthews is going to be... Uh, leading our effort in that direction. So I'm very excited about what he what he has in mind. Thanks. So that is my uh, that uh, committee report. Um, just some other things we've been doing. Uh, Lori, Jeff, and I have been spending time at City Hall, kind of learning the ropes of how things work at, uh, at City Hall. It's, it's, it's you know, an interesting experience. Uh, Amelia and the other staff have been working hard to help us lay a foundation for really a better communication, record cleaning, uh, record keeping, and information flow, which I think is uh, important, something important to the commission. If you haven't noticed, we've uh, added a new uh, email address, which is Norwalk Harbor Commission at NorwalkCT.org, which appears on our landing uh, <coughs> page uh, at, at the, uh, on the NorwalkCT.org website. Um, don't worry, the information only goes to Amelia and myself, and we'll uh, dis uh, distribute it from there, but it, it's helpful for the public to have a, a way of uh, uh, making comment or sending information our way or asking a question and for to have it get a little screening so it doesn't get to everybody and get nine responses. So we're gonna see how that works. Uh, I've asked Amelia to, to send out a reminders for agenda items. It's important that we have uh, an agenda posted before the meeting that explains what we're going to be doing or perhaps acting on so that those uh, uh, we can all put our 
agenda item suggestions in and uh, Amelia and I will edit those if there's uh, uh, not going to be enough time. <laughs> uh, we changed how we do the minutes so we know what the changes are, so we are we know what the amendments are. Um, there's a good possibility we could be returning to City Hall for application review and commission meetings in a, in a hybrid kind of way. And I'd, I'd like to talk with each of you individually a little bit about your feeling about that, but I think that it's something that we'd all uh, want to be uh, be moving toward. Uh, we all know that Dennis uh, St. Helena is stepping down from the commission at the end of the month, and we'll be acknowledging him a little later. Uh, we do need to find a replacement for Dennis on the commission, so uh, please think of anyone you think might be uh, a good candidate. I've reached out to some you know, people in the area that I think would be useful. Uh, something we don't have on our commission is a representative of the uh, the commercial marinas in, in the city. And I think that would be a, a good point of view to have on our, on our commission. But again, anyone you can think of it would be appropriate, please send them, send them my way. And we're also uh, actively seeking candidates for a deputy harbor master. Dr. Pinto is uh, hey, receiving Dr. those. I have a list, list of individuals that have been uh, vetted out, have been discussed. And uh, we have also recommendations from our harbor master as uh, who we would like to feel comfortable in working with. And I think that's that's the main concern that we've had in the past. Yeah. So I, I will present those. Uh, Alan, just let me ask one question with regard to our yep. website. Uh, application review is going to be sent to that address as well? I, yeah, I think that's we should start doing that. And it's, and it's well, apparently can... apparently they, they already have been. And so I, that was my concern, is making sure that if the application review is sent there, that it reaches us in a timely manner. So is that website being, is that reviewed every day or every other, or how does that work? No, it goes to Amelia. Amelia is a full-time employee at City Hall. So it goes to Amelia and myself. Oh. Uh, so she will, she will, all those uh, application review kinds of things will go, distributed to you and your committee um, immediately on receipt. But oftentimes, many of the applications that come through far exceed the capacity of uh, something even 15 kilobytes and megabytes and terabytes. You know, they're, they're, some of them are quite large and sometimes they have to be sent out in piecemeal. Uh, and so it'd be helpful to have, I guess, maybe one site where, I don't know, where maybe you can look at the application uh, and... Uh, uh, without having to download sometimes downloading it becomes a problem and then sending it back out again to the commission members becomes a problem because of the size of, of uh, Amelia do you want to speak to that a little bit because I think it would work very very well just uh, yesterday I guess that we did that yeah so, so I think city hall is a slightly larger capacity like I can send and receive emails um, with larger and more attachments um, but I did have that issue when I tried to send out the agenda and like the six different documents so um, I know the link that I sent, the WeTransfer link, it did have you download that, um, but was that an issue? Is that what you're talking about, is having to download that is a problem, and then... No, some, some of them are... No, th that, wasn't, that wasn't a problem, Amelia. No, it's just it's some, some of the applications that I get, uh, especially from... Um, well, there's the applica applicants that usually send excessive amount of information. When I say excessive mm -hmm. information, it is... <laughs> Uh, uh, well exceeds some of the information that we really need, but and sometimes it's helpful. But, but yeah, uh, uh, they go over the megabyte requirement for some of the computers that, that I deal with here. Got it. Okay, so hopefully, because we haven't received any applications through that the Norwalk Harbor Commission email yet, but when that does happen, um, I should be able to receive everything. And then I guess worst case scenario, when I send it out to you in the rest of application review, I could, I, maybe I just have to send that in multiple emails, which is kind of annoying, but just make sure you get everything. All right. Well, if you don't have to, as I, as I said, for my sending out, I think I can only send out, uh, if it's, I think it's 15, 16 megabytes or something like that at a time. Something of that nature. Okay. Yeah. So worst case scenario, I guess it'll just be multiple emails. I mean, that's a rare situation though, Amelia. Okay. Well, let, right. let's, let's continue along the way. Proceed. Okay, sounds good. Because I think that the city has the capability of transmitting, uh, you know, uh, things the way we, Amelia did uh, recently, and that makes it make it a lot easier for us. It also means there's uh, inherently a copy in, in city hall, which I think is very very yeah, useful uh, as well. Uh, so we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. That's uh, uh, that's kind of a sort of a work in progress. 
Um, Alan, if I can add that uh, the WeTransfer has a uh, the free version anyway. I don't know if the city uses the free version or not, but it's a <clears throat> size limit of two gig. So that's usually that's enough, especially if you have it all zipped up, which it all which it will be anyway. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Staff reports. Uh, Harbor Mesh Lavallo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, really uh, um, small report. Um, I've been working with the uh, the online uh, um, online mooring um, people. Still trying to clear out all these uh, duplicates and expired uh, applicants that are kind of following up our following up our system. Um, I spent four hours yesterday because it's just it's line by line, and I got to double check to make sure that I'm not, you know, will, will use me as, as as an example. If I applied years ago, but I still have a current mooring, I was issued two reference numbers for that mooring. So to try to delete the old one, I could delete the new one. So you have to you have to like walk on eggs to make sure I'm not I'm not deleting any people. But Bruce, um, is, it, is that our problem or is that we, we pay for the service, don't we? They get the, this fee for service for online mooring. Isn't it their problem to, to correct for that glitch? I was told I was told no, it's 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 oh. on our end. Oh, okay. It, 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 they 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 are they've been great. Okay. They've been great. You know, they, they you know, I I call I I call them Rhode I Rhode Island Matt. Um, you know, he, he checks in with me every day. Hey. Is everything running smooth? Can I help? They've been very, very accommodating, which is which is helpful. Right. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, Mangles, we we we've been all corresponding and with 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 the online people trying to get a handle on this. Um, on the waterfront, it's all calm, but uh, with the moorings, it's a little it's a little rough, I, I should say. Um, but we're it's getting it's getting a lot better. We're we're far ahead of years ago for sure. Um, uh, I've been dealing with with um, our our mooring um, inspectors, making sure when they go out and, and inspect the mooring to make sure they get the GPS location. Very important that that information is logged in to this online mooring um, uh, application. So we know exactly, then we can pinpoint of my Excel sheet that I have of all, all the names, I have everybody on the system, then I can connect that coordinates with that owner of that boat. And just, it's, it's, it's data entry, it's, it's time consuming. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I learned of a new tool with online mooring I kind of like with this last little um, snow bomb or nor'easter we were gonna get. Um, I was able to go to online mooring and the people, there's like 109 applicants that have been approved. I was able to go in the system and send them all a text that a uh, nor'easter was coming. So I did get feedback. Um, I had some, some uh, mooring owners call me and say, wow, that's, that was, that, that was great to be informed of a couple of days ahead that, Hey, there's a potential storm coming. So I think that's a great a great tool um, that we can we can send messages to all these uh, applicants. Um, next is uh, and, and and Commissioner Mangles, I'll I'll talk to you tomorrow um, tomorrow morning while I'm having my coffee. But I, I did get the coordinates for the uh, transit moorings the, the two that we have. I got the GPS coordinates. Um, there's 600 pound moorings. Um, so that'll probably handle up to like a 40 foot boat um, and good weather. Obviously we, when we um, talk with Dakwa and, and, and finalize that, we, I think we got to put it in there. Hey, it's only, you know, if we're nor'easter or a storm's coming in, you know, obviously the boat, any boat can't, can't be on these, uh, these moorings. Um, that's, Pretty much it. 
Oh, and uh, uh, what, and, well, just one more thing. Um, um, Mr. Stedman and Sergeant B uh, Basigli um, were kind of in the mix. Um, um, Jeffrey's been working with DEP on a permit for to add some more five mile buoys, and I'll I'll leave it to Sergeant Basigli and, and Jeff to, to bring that up. But uh, communi communication's good. Mr. 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 Laval, should I can I impose on take your time to maybe give your choice for harbor deputy harbor masters? Bring that up to the commission's floor, or do you want to do that later on? No, I do it now. My my choice is. Uh, well, I have I have the, I have the four names. There are four individuals. If the commission just indulge me for a minute, uh, we have four names that have been submitted uh, to the commission. Uh, Mr. Lavallo, uh, Mr. Mr. Lavallo has uh, uh, received those applications uh, from uh, I'm not sure the, the request rather for for being appointed to deputy harbor master. And uh, the first that Mr. Lavallo had looked at was um, uh, Owen Lee. Uh, who is a uh, uh, for deputy harbor master, and he is a uh, police officer in town. He's a uh, uh, he's got his. He sent me his email. If I'd like, I, I don't want to take the time from the uh, for the commission. And, to Sean, yes. Yeah, sure. Could could we could you uh, send that information to all the commissioners? Because all we should have from each of these guys okay. is a resume and a, yes. a okay. letter. Of all right, I will interest. do that. Absolutely, I will do that. All right, so that would be a better way to first of all have a look yeah, and then be prepared. Post, I think. Post post this for another month. This, I'm sure there's no no issue on that. So I will I will send out their their application. Uh, that's the, it's not an application. It's the resume and their credentials, and right. I'll send out also the uh, triage of of uh, listing that doctor uh, doctor that uh, Mr. Lavallo had uh, indicated of whom he can work with, and plus based on their credentials uh, of who would be second and third. And the commission has the uh, well, we have based on the state statutes that uh, we can make recommendations, uh, certainly in conjunction with the harbor master of who we choose as first, second, third. But it's up to the governor to make the final decision as to who they respect. But most of the time, and I've been doing this now for the past close to almost 20 years now, that uh, the governor has also all, oftentimes gone with a commission's recommendation. Uh, one other thing for Sergeant Biscayli and, and, and you, Bruce, is just the speed buoys, the progress there. Either Justin or, or Bruce, or I don't know if you either want to talk, speak to that. Uh, the one thing I'd like to get tonight is the, the cost of the buoys. I'd like to get a, a authorization to spend a little money on those from the, from the commissioners. Yeah, so we... Um, we... Uh... I was working with Jeff Stedman about that. Uh, we pulled all the coordinates and everything, and I believe we're just waiting on the application to be approved by DEP. Um, but we are good to go on putting them in where we think they should be going. Yeah, uh, sorry, okay. I, I don't have the completed uh, drawing tonight. I mean, we have completed it, but I, I don't have it to share with you. But when, when we talk about this with DEEP, um, we we've, we've, we've realized that the permittee for the existing speed markers is the Harbor Management Commission. And that, that existing permit went, was issued in 2011. And that's for you know, five, five, I believe. five markers and, mm -hmm. and a beacon. And so what Deep suggested is rather than applying for a new permit, we're, we're applying for an amendment of the, of the existing permit. So we need to show the, the uh, which we have, the. The, the existing permitted buoys and markers and, and the uh, proposed new ones. And, and so we, we did that with, with Google Earth. I, I didn't do it, I, someone helped me to, to identify the, the uh, locations of them on both the navigation chart and, and a uh, Google Earth image. Uh, to, and now tomorrow, I hope, hopefully I'll get the, Jeff can sign the, the application for you, Alan. And, and uh, I'll bring that, bring that to City Hall and Hopefully we'll, the, we'll, we'll get this out to deep by by the end of the week. But uh, but no, deep, deep has been been helpful, and and uh, and the commission will be the, the is the permittee for all of these. And and the purpose is is to is to mark the the restrict inner harbor restricted speed zone as as designated. I think chapter or section sixty nine. I think it's 03 in in the in the Norwalk uh, Code of Ordinance ordinances. So right. expect any issues. We're, we're communicating with Deep. Uh, I, I am 
you know, uh, uh, telling them what our, what our progress is. Um, so anyway, so, sorry, I, I thought I'd have this submitted today. Uh, but, uh, we'll, no need to apologize. Thank you, thank I, you for I your just, effort, Jeff. Yeah, like the, the thing is, I from uh, Sergeant Biscagli, I have a, a estimate of uh, about $1,800 to purchase the three speed, board, uh, speed markers. So I'd like to four, four, make a motion four, four that we are being asked for. Four? Four. Correct. We have five currently, and I'm looking for four additional ones. We purchased the chain and the uh, shackling equipment already, which so is the buoys and the uh, signage for the buoys that we're looking for. How did, how did you purchase the chain? We purchased the chain through our um, supplier with Granger through the department, okay. through our through our budget. All right. So what, what is our, do you have an estimate on the four uh, markers? I don't have it in front of me, but it was 1800 and change, I believe. I think 1829, yeah. I think it was. I thought it was three. It's four. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's so I'd like a, a, a uh, I make a motion that we uh, authorize a, up to two thousand uh, dollars for the you. for the purchase of the buoys. I second that. All in favor? Wait, discussion. Aye. Discussion, please. Discussion. Where are the locations? The locations basically it's just increasing signage from Manrius at the entrance of the channel all the way up to the docks. We looked at putting one up in the upper harbor and also one in Village Creek. But based on the depth with the low tide, it would create more of a hazard with uh, the drift of the buoy because the channel is so narrow there. So it's really just increasing the signage between Manorisa and the uh, city dock. All right. Well, we, yeah. Well, we, you could put one, you know, adjacent to Hoyt Island, but not, not right next to the, you're right. With, you know, with 15, 20 foot of chain, you would need, you know, it, it that would drift quite a bit because the channel at the Village Creek Fairway is, is narrow, but you could still put one to regulate, you know, the, the, you know, the wakeboarders and water skiers that, that do exceed the, the speed limit for the, the, the exclusion zone um, north of the southern tip of Hoyt Island. So, like I said, we did look at that and it just didn't seem, it, it seemed like it would create more of a hazard than anything else putting one there since it is so shallow. And the amount of chain we would need would just be drifting all over the place. Well, it's still needed there. So we have Chris. Yeah. So we need we need another marker, or we decide we can't put one there. No. Can you do it with a sign instead? I think that's what they did uh, up Wilson Cove. It's it's on a piling of sorts. On a piling, yeah. Yeah, day marker kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's pilings on Manorisa where they're marked. It would be, we had to put a new pile in there. order to yeah, do that. It's on the outer, it's, it's, outer side. It's not down by, by the harbor of Village Creek. And that's where the problem is with the water skiers, right, Chris? Well, why are the water skier? It's, it's a great <laughs> place to water ski because it's super flat. So at high tide, you know, folks just bomb around there. Um, well, well, with the, the, the harbor management plan defines it as the, the extended line from the southern tip of, of Hoyt Island. North of that is north of that is is the is the six knot um, right. speed limit, and and that certainly gets exceeded. It doesn't have to be adjacent to the fairway, um, and and yes, and, and on, on low low tides, it you know on a on a, on a spring tide, it would it would probably Go, it would probably be down to, to mud there occasionally, but but generally there's always water there, um, and just you know set it set it far enough away from the fairway so that it wouldn't drift into the fairway. That would be my request. Okay. Well, do, do we do we need then to amend what we yep. what we put together? Um, let me let me see. Can I, can I share? Is, Sergeant Biscagli is, is still there. Yes, he is. Yeah, I'm still there. Let me, let, if I, I'll share my screen, and I, and I don't have the ones that we have, just the, the, the ones to be submitted, but let me see if I can. Tell me if the, the, this is, 
Let's see if you can share. These are, this isn't, this isn't our submitted drawing, but this, this, this shows you where, where, where number three and four are that we're talking about. I'm talking about your image number three, your third slide. Down here. I, you know, your third slide. I see the, your, your, that one. I, All right. I'm talking, so you see Hoyt Island sort of in the left center. Yep. Everything below, everything north of the southern tip of Hoyt Island is a six mile an hour, six knot right. um, speed limit. Yeah. So we are putting one um, but the, on that west side of the channel near Manresa, but a little further mm -hmm. south. We are putting one there. But That's where one of the existing ones are already. Going any, going any further in there, I think it's just going to be it's it's, yeah, but, it's just, there's not enough water to do it. Yeah, but the, the other issue is that that that's we're we're proposing this application to amend the existing permit application, which is specific to the inner harbor speed speed area designated in the code. Um, if if we're going to to uh, add something else outside of the inner harbor, then we, we're going to have to go through another another application and, and reference reference the the specific area that, that's already that's designated as a restricted speed area. We, we can only we can only put these buoys in areas that are that are identified in the code as, as a restricted area. Well so then do that please. If you if, if the restricted area is here. Yes, the restricted area is up there. Up here. So that so any buoy that would that would be permitted would have to be within the existing restricted area. Can't can't have it outside of the area. That's what we were. These these have to mark re regulate regulated areas. Yes, yes, it's 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 regulated in the harbor management plan. That's not a, that's not the question. Well, it's it's the city code with the, with the ordinance that that the, these these markers for speed have. Are, are for the purpose of, of identifying and enforcing the, the speed areas that are adopted in the, in the Norwalk code and which have been approved by DEEP. So, there, so the harbor management plan hasn't been fully approved and haven't fully been incorporated into the ordinances? Is that what you're telling me? No, not really. We have to decide, I, I don't quite understand it. Are you, are you talking about putting a, a, a new buoy to mark this, this restricted Correct. speed? Correct, yes. And, and it would request. be up. It would be have to be north of the of the southern line. At, yeah, it's it's. Line. I think it's it's from the outfall. You can actually see the notch in Manresa from the outfall of Manresa to the southern. Right, well, that that's something that, that's something we could do. But but again, it's the the, the way the code is read is that these are these are the locations are identified by the Norwalk Marine Police Division. So if if if, if they wish to put one up in here to mark this Village Creek restricted speed area. Then, then we could do that, but we're going to have to. We're going to have to. Well, we'd have to amend the application that we put together so far to add it to add another one. That's my request. I just, I just don't think there's a safe way to do that with the amount of chain that we would need to for the tides. Mm -hmm. To be, to be honest, I, I, we went out there, we looked at it. I don't think we can safely do it because you can still water ski in there. That's going to be drifting all over the place with twenty feet of chain at. Low tide. Well, they're not. They're not water skiing at low tide. They're water skiing at high tide. There's mud. There, there's there's no boat. There's no boating outside of the fairway at low tide. I'm just I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just apprehensive of where, where that buoy is going to end up with the amount of chain we're going to need on it based on the water level. Well, the tidal swing there is the same everywhere else as it is everywhere else in the harbor. Yeah, the other buoys are going to be in 14 feet of water. Yeah, with an extra 10 feet of chain. I mean, the chain always goes to the bottom. And I. We're not putting an extra 10 feet, 10 feet of chain on it because of that exact reason. We're trying to limit the amount of drift that they're going to have. Right. I, think, I think this is a discussion. Is a discussion committee, I mean, for the mooring committee. Yeah, that's a. We need to serve. Mooring and harbor safety. Harbor safety. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think we need to kind of uh, end this conversation now and uh, 
because I think we'll our, our, a little more. Our, our Marine Police, our Marine Police Harbor Master, it's certainly in, in uh, you know, it's certainly the residents of that area. Again, I guess, Chris, you have obviously firsthand knowledge in that area. Right. So I propose an amendment to the, to the motion on the floor that we added. We we authorize up to twenty five hundred dollars for up to five speed markers pending the resolution of the committee. But we can we can approve that amount and that right. now. Do I have a second for my amendment, please? For a second. Uh, I'll second that amendment. Uh, any discussion? Is that does all that in mean, favor? Oh, sorry. Aye. 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 Would that be so that if the let's say, for example, after discussion with the harbor safety, that uh, it's not feasible to put one there? Do we still own that buoy? Uh, no, we that's don't a, have to purchase it. We're authorizing up to. Oh, I see. Up to. Up to. Oh, I, I got you. Okay. Not mandating that it, it be purchased. It's okay. So the money is money is there, so we could we can get that done without another another vote. Um, Just Jeff, to interrupt, Alan, and so we won't submit the application then um, tomorrow or Friday, because um, I, I know I know Deep is not going to want to review one application and then get a, a, a second one. They're going to want to look at this all at one time. Yeah, I think you need to see if what's 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 possible or whether a day marker is is preferable mm -hmm. or a beacon on the island on Hoyt Island. Well, it's kind of and and the the, exist, the existing permit that we're that we've been asked to amend is specific to the inner harbor of, of Norwalk. So okay, I have to talk with Deep tomorrow and 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 see what they what they suggest or ask us to do, whether we should go ahead and submit this for the inner harbor, the ones that we've already identified and, and described, and then come up with another one for the, whatever this, this area is called, forget what it's called. It's the, it's the, no, the village, village Creek area. Um, is this gonna interfere with the boating season, Jeff, if we postpone? postpone? Well, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll call deep tomorrow and ask what, what they that's recommend us to do. Consideration. I mean, it's, it's, it's because we're ready to submit. We're ready with the signatures to submit the, the, yeah, the I mean, application for the additional four for the inner harbor. I mean, if it's going to hinder hinder the boating season or interfere with the boating season by by stalling, I don't think we should do that. Well, then let's do I this. Let's let's let's, uh, let's submit for the four and then let's revisit. Uh, the Village Creek and and make another application. Well, I think Jeff has a good plan, which is just to call tomorrow to see if he can add the Village Creek one right. to the application right. he's submitting. And if he can do it, if he doesn't, then it's then then the four the four goes ahead, and a second application has to be prepared. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Very good. Jeff can Jeff can manage it. I trust him. <clears throat> Mister, we all set, Bruce. We all set, Justin. Yes. Yes, um, back, Excellent. To, back to you, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Stedman. Uh, I have to, sorry to keep talking about all this going on and on, but uh, the two things that I would, I would mention are one, first with respect to our approved grant to study the street ends, um, public access opportunities. Um, that's still that, that those approved small harbor grants from the Port Authority have still not been uh, acted on by the Connecticut Bond Commission. So the, the Bond Commission meetings in January and February were canceled. The, the March 31 meeting is still on the schedule, but that's expected to be canceled uh, after talking with the Port Authority, or at least not to include the, the ship grants. And remember, ours is relatively small relative to some of the larger grants that, that, that are Total in the you know Stanford is up I think almost two million dollars, so the, the the bond commission agenda is is set or developed by the uh, office of policy and management at, at the governor's request, and I do know from talking with the port authority that someone from the office of policy and management has been reviewing the ship grant requests in the background to them, so don't have anything to report as of yet, but we also learned that that. That, that the towns that were thinking of going ahead with these projects and then seeking reimbursement after the fact from the Port Authority, that the Port Authority has, has 
inform them that that's not permitted under this program. It's supposed to be a reimbursable program. So can't go ahead and expect the money after the fact. So that's that. And then the other most significant um, uh, issue, I guess, that we're dealing with is the pending amendment to the harbor management legislation, which would clarify the authorities of the commission to, to in, even just review applications for deep permits and would, would make clear that the Harbor Management Commission's recommendations have to be considered by DEEP. And so that there, as, as we mentioned last month, I believe, uh, I believe we mentioned, there is a pending bill that's been drafted. It's called House Bill 5614. And there was a public hearing held on, on this bill by the Environment Committee on February 27th. And I remember that because I testified. Uh, there was only, it, it, it was very interesting, the hearing. And I, I testified via the computer, um, but there were many bills, a number of bills that the Environment Committee was holding the hearing on, but the hearing comments were not organized specific to a bill. The, the people who signed up to speak were just assigned random uh, positions to speak about whichever bill they, they were there to speak about. So I, I'm not complaining, but it's sort of interesting. I joined, the, the hearing started at 10 a.m. And at 5.45 p.m., I got to say three minutes worth of stuff. The, the uh, chair of the Stratford Harbor Commission, believe it or not, he got to testify at 10.45 p.m. And the mayor, the mayor of New London, even though he's an elected official, they, they, didn't, they made a mistake and didn't put him up front and wouldn't adjust it. He, he testified at 10.30 at night. Um, and th those were the only comments made on, on this bill. However, after the hearing, the DEP commissioner and the DOT commissioner submitted opposition statements to the bill. And in, in our opinion, misrepresented or misunderstood the purpose of the bill and described it as an effort for the municipalities to take away authority from the state, which is not correct. So, so subsequent to that, um, through John's efforts, um, a, a statement of another statement of support was sent out to all harbor management commissions in the state. And this was just a few days ago. And so, so far, 16 have responded with signatures seven, to, seven. to support. How many, John? 17. We have 17. Oh, I, I, so, so have responded. So we're submitting that to the, to the record of the environment committee and we'll add additional signatures when they come in. But this, the, the, the outcome of this, this legislation really affects much of what, what we do. Um, and, an, and an applicant uh, could say, you don't have any authority to review our, our applications or your, your recommendations don't mean anything because they're not spelled out ahead of time. So we, we put in a, lot, in a lot of time on this and it's, it's uh, hopefully it will, it, will be it will be successful. We don't, we don't know yet when they might vote or act to, to vote on this. And I, and I do know that the mayor of New London has reached out to deep officials asking for an opportunity to, to meet with them and to try to work out an agreeable, uh, you know, an agreeable compromise perhaps with, with some different language that would still uphold the commission's authorities and, and make the recommendations- uh, uh, Meaningful. Meaningful, yes. Uh, th th thanks, so. Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Bardish. Thank you, Chairman Kibbe. So uh, just quickly, uh, thanks to the uh, commission for um, asking the Shellfish Commission to comment on the application for 27 Coveley Drive. That was a COP. Um, the Shellfish Commission expressed um, no opposition. And we'd like to thank the uh, applicant for including a vessel cradle. Um, that's always a good practice. Um, we had no other um, uh, areas that uh, where our jurisdictions coincide. So uh, I'll yield back and eat Norwalk shellfish, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bartish. Um Boy, mooring and harbor, harbor safety, Mr. Mangles. Thank you, Mr. Kibbe. Uh, so no safety issues uh, yet, uh, and hopefully never uh, this, this uh, never again, but. Uh, I just want to go through uh, some some of the mooring information that that we have. Uh, as you know, 
Uh, DACWA is going to be used for the transient mooring uh, reservation uh, as that platform and payment. Uh, the daily rate is going to be $40. Uh, DACWA did uh, give us some training on the uh, DACWA system. Uh, and I was there, the Harvard master and, uh, and, and the chair, Alan, Alan Tibby was there. Uh, they did a very good overview of DACWA uh, uh, by the DACWA rep. Uh, currently, we have two transient moorings off the East Channel uh, marker, and, and we plan on uh, having additional uh, out by the islands. Uh, uh, we need to uh, upload, and it's nice to hear that the Harbor Master has some of that data, uh, additional data needs to be uploaded to DACWA with the locations of the uh, of the moorings, including uh, maximum length and draft and things uh, that we can uh, fit up there. <clears throat> We're going to have to mark these uh, these buoys. So stenciling will be placed uh, on the moorings, such as uh, NHM transient only reserved through DACWA, something like that. Uh, I'll see if the marine unit uh, can be notified of who has uh, reserved the moorings and notify the harbor master of any uh, discrepancies. Uh, the is re, about the online mooring system. One I one thing that I want to make clear is that the online mooring system. Uh, Dr. Pinto, you, uh, you you believe that it was uh, like a bug or something in their software, and it actually isn't. It's the fact that <clears throat> there's some, some people uh, that have a mooring seem to get flustered, I would say, for the lack of a better word. And uh, they, uh, they click the uh, apply a new, uh, for a new uh, permit. So if, if it's me, then, you know, and I had one last year, but I get flustered, I said, oh, forget this. I'm going to just apply for a new one, enter all my detail again, and off you go. It should be easy. And, and even uh, the person who was training us, uh, Rhode Island, Matt, didn't understand why it's, it's so difficult for some, but it, but it happens. So that's where a lot of those duplicates uh, uh, come from. Uh, so we we did go through training uh, with him twice. Uh, so on that training was Matt Gifford. Uh, Amelia was on that as well. Uh, and and myself and the harbor master. So that was two days to an hour and then a half hour. So the an hour the first day and a half hour the, the second day. As of uh, yesterday, I believe there were 84 five paid uh, online moorings. Correct. Uh, and, uh, and I have to say that Harbor Master Lavallo is, is working very hard to, to del delete the, uh, the records. Uh, today during the training, I did find a bug in, in, the, uh, in the software that, that Rhode Island Matt couldn't fix either. So, um, the uh, the good thing about this is that we we asked uh, if an import of a CSV of an Excel sheet uh, can be done uh, that lists all of the managed fields. So there would be we have three managed fields: so Sprite, Rowate, and then Norwalk. Uh, they would fill out. I gave them a, a template. Uh, they they edited that template a little bit. Uh, and they are just testing it now to make sure that we can import. There's not going to be any additional charge for this because they're not paying through, uh, through the online mooring system. But this gives us the opportunity to input all of that data. And then that's at anybody's fingertips uh, who needs it, you know, basically uh, the, the harbor master or anything uh, or anyone else. Uh, and then we can go ahead and, and compare that list. It, it should be a very good uh, time saver uh, and that data would be readily available. Um, 
Jeff Stedman, as uh, he stated, he was finalizing the permit and I'm not gonna go rehash all of that because he stole my thunder on that one. Uh, and uh, Dennis Santella, as, as we, we all know, uh, passed the baton, uh, but he has offered his assistance anytime that I needed it. As far as that, that's my report. You're muted. Alan, you are muted. There, there you go. go. Yep. I sent you a financial sheet uh, today. I don't know if you have a chance to look at that. We're getting uh, our our revenue is in on on moorings. Uh, I did make a note that, that of the managed fields are technically delinquent right now, and we should really start to work with them to get them back into the uh, on a schedule. So we're not we're not the last person that they pay for things. Uh, and then I'll leave that to, to Jeff and his uh, uh, mooring and the Harbor Safety Committee. Do you have any questions about the, the, the revenue? Uh, we applied for a $20,000 city grant. Uh, we had a meeting with the BET uh, two days ago. Uh, so we'll wait and see what the BET approves. They, were, they were asked uh, asked good questions, and, and we had some uh, nice comments on our on our proposal and what we what we do. We'll see if they decide to spend, uh, uh, give us give us the money they've been giving us. We asked for four thousand dollars less this year than last year because we in, anticipated an increase in revenue due to our our mooring fee increase. They were appreciative of the the reduction in the request. So we will learn where that goes. Um, are there no questions. Uh, we can move on then. Plans and recommendations. Mr. McDonald. Hello. Um, <coughs> um, as far as the Amistad uh, visit, um, we're actually having a, a, just an update meeting with the Discovery Amistad and Newark Public Schools tomorrow. Um, if anybody wants to call in, let me know. I, I'll see if it, I didn't set it up, so I didn't send out the invite, but I think um, I can add people. Um, I've applied for the for the, the Coast Guard event permit that will be required to um, so that it's, it's not so much I mean the event permit is more for like regattas and things like that but um, you know it because we're stationing the vessel um, it's going to impinge on the federal channel that's the main focus of the permit and I I did a I, I did some blue beam drawings and and submitted that a couple of weeks ago. I haven't heard. I have heard. I had heard from them that they received it because I had some additional additional question, but I have not heard uh, a response to it. Um, and then the other thing I looked into is the boating infrastructure grant program that Deep runs. So um, there's a pot of money that gets authorized from the federal government that goes down to the states, and when the states get it. Um, they open it, they open it up for requests for proposals and that's a that's a bi biennial um program so it's it'll um and i and i from the correspondence with deep they anticipate it opening up the rfp process around april i think july something is when the proposals are due um so i was looking at this in terms of what we have discussed for um a floating visitors dock out in the south anchorage basin um, this is you know, this is exactly what this grant program is for. It is for you know promoting um, transient dock um, dock infrastructure, whether it's landborne stuff with you know facilities and that kind of stuff, or for dockage ex itself. So um, you know, it, once I find out what the program is and what the timeline is, um, you know, I'll. I'll make a motion that we that, that we that we go for this, but um, I you know and it would probably be good to start a deep permit for the structure dredging and fill at that point. Um, the more you know, we won't have a we won't have a authorized permit, but you know basically they said you know I listed some stuff like per, do we need plans? Do we need permits? Do we need estimates? And they're like the more information you can give us, the better chance you have of 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 getting the grant. So um, 
you know, I, I think it's worth going for if we if we don't get this pot of money because this could this could pay for all of it if we if we if we if we do this right. Um, and if we don't do it, if we don't do it this year, we're waiting two years. This isn't an annual thing; it's a biannual thing. So the next the next bite at the apple is in 2025. So if this is something we want to do next, you know, we can get the money this year, plan it out, um, get it designed, get the estimates. You know, um, I think it's certainly something you know we could we could do amongst ourselves. Um, uh, so once once I find out what the what the timeline is and what the what for the grants, I'll make a motion to that effect. But I wanted to get everybody thinking about that. Do is it, you know, I, I'm not going to do this all myself, but I can do a lot of this. Is this something we want to do and push and you know and push through the pipe? Um and and, and Jeff's already reported that there is no progress on getting the, the street end money, so nothing has happened to that with that. So um I don't know if Jeff, if you have any updates on the the dock fee initiative. Um, I think that was the only other thing we really talked about in in the planning uh, plans no, recommendation. No, I, I don't. I don't have a. I know someone from the, the the law department was previously on on the call, but that was may have been a for a different topic. But regarding that boating infrastructure grant, uh, we we did receive money from that program a number of years ago and we purchased uh, helix yep. and Bedman anchors south of the of the visitor's dock and then we lost them all yep. so we'll be a little bit more careful this time yeah um the um uh, chris I, I i've already got estimates for the uh uh for the system to uh, uh to to anchor the uh, the floating docks so i so already you have that. So I, you know, um, certainly I thought that I shared it with everybody, but and, and that that we we can do that. Some some years ago we did that in Milford Harbor. Correct. Uh, with with, with uh, and deep at the time, each even though each of those individual docks don't need a a, a permit because they're under the the square footage, but under square feet. Since mm -hmm. there were going to be a number of them, it would it would be appropriate to apply for a permit, uh, even though each one would be would be excluded. So that that that's something that could be that we we could do quite easily. Yeah, yeah. share that share that estimate with me. Did you, did you get? Sure. Do you think we would we would anchor it or would we we put piles in? Anchor it, anchor it with uh anchor. with with mushrooms. Okay. All C flex. Okay. Yeah. It's did you did did you price out the docks themselves? I did not price out the docks. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not to. Not to extend the meeting, uh, just just to, I give a heads up that the, the Shore and Country Club is replacing all of its docks this fall, and so there's about 200 feet of uh, linear dock that's going to be disposed of. I don't know if it's uh, suitable for that use at all, but it's it's mm -hmm. going to happen. The, the the Milford system was anchored with the helix anchors, and then the, mm -hmm. in order to keep them tighter and, and be able to get more more boats in, in into the harbor. But right. that can, and we also talked about those. Some of those those uh, that equipment being fundable, if they're ever the, the ship program from the Connecticut Port Authority should continue. That's also that we were told that that's a, that's that's a fundable item. Right. And as, and as long as I have the floor, I don't know if this is technically under plans recommendation, but I wanted to ask Amelia if there's been any word on the Resilient South Norwalk Advisory Committee. Um, I haven't heard anything, but I will uh, talk to my our staff member who works, who's a part of that, and just see if there's been any update. Make sure you're on that email chain. Great, thank you. All right, I'm, I'm, anything? I'm, I'm good, thank you. I'm just, just, I'm, I'm sorry to prolong it. I, I'll stop, but I, I just to so you can see, I, I do have the the permit drawing uh, for for the uh, the marker buoys. Uh, so I, I could share that if you wanted to look at it quickly to see what what the police department in, has has done. Um, you don't. Uh, surely, go ahead if it's. Uh... I don't. I don't know if you can. Well, it's loading. Participants can now see the, the screen. So this 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 is this is the. It's not complete yet, but I have to do some final touches. But this is the permit drawing, and the important thing is is the is the coordinates. That's that's what deep the, the, the drawing yep. can show the approximate locations, but 
the, the, the coordinates, and this shows the existing uh, buoys and, and the proposed in a different, in a different color. So that, that, that's what we've been working on, and a significant part of it was, was the, the, the uh, Marine Division to provide the coordinates, which is, which is the basis of the, of the permit. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, you're muted. Get it down. Yeah, I muted myself because I couldn't hear anything because of all this. We have a lot of white noise, or is that just me? No. A lot of noise. I do too. A lot of noise. Beautiful. Just went away. Hmm. Back again. Mike, right. I think it might be you. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Yep, oh, I was getting is. I was getting ready to talk early, so I'll stop. Well, it, it the actually the the floor is to you, uh, but try try unmuting again. Is it really yeah, bad? Sounds like you got uh, fan, uh, uh, we like can you got a fan you. going in your room. Yeah. We yeah. Can hear okay. So sorry. Uh, better excuse for me to just make this as quickly as possible. Hey. It's good okay. now. Okay, great. So quick, uh, two quick updates. Uh, first on the Oyster Town Initiative, and if it's okay, uh, Chair Kibbe, I'll just roll right into the newsletter, the communications update. Correct. So I think it's been a couple of months since uh, we've spoken as a group about uh, the, my dream that will, uh, I'm not gonna let die uh, here, but it's the, the Oyster Town Initiative again, uh, ahead of, you know, kind of planning uh, for the September 9th, 45th annual uh, Norwalk Oyster Festival. Uh, thanks to Jeff Stedman the last couple months, uh, we've done a bunch of research and kind of put together what could be possible. Uh, we have, of course, the Connecticut Sea Grant. Uh, Jeff has been in uh, touch with them about you know, what they recommend. And, you know, the state, uh, Yukon, has a great oyster kind of aquaculture program. I think I mentioned before that other states uh, have... Uh, oysters that are not of the top quality that we have here in Connecticut, but they do have great oyster trails that were relatively easy to set up. So that is really what the Oyster Town Initiative is kind of going to be focused on, which is setting up a trail with uh, kind of historical natural resource markers around the harbor that, to be honest, are already there. So we're not really creating the wheel at all, uh, keeping in, uh, in mind and doing my research and due diligence around the kind of private public partnership aspect of this. So that's what's taking a little bit of a long time here. I will say that the uh, Connecticut uh, Oyster Restoration Plan that was released last year uh, highlights Norwalk as a, a focal point for oyster restoration for the state. Um, a little biased, but it pretty, uh, it, it hones right in on Veterans Park, as many of you all know, uh, certainly Steve knows and John knows as a, a great place for natural, uh, I think, bed restoration. So another, you know, kind of spot on the trail, uh, I'll be working with some of our stakeholders uh, with the city to discuss a that, that marketing partnership. Uh, and they'll, there will be more of a work plan that I will submit to the uh, plans and recommendations committee between now uh, and our next general meeting. As I will roll right into the newsletter, uh, guessing that we probably don't have any questions on oysters right now but if we do please feel free to jump <laughs> in sorry go ahead okay so finally i have got around here to putting together a, a skeleton a framework for our 2023 edition spring newsletter um i have ran this by chair kibbe and, and a couple of you uh before this and and i'd like to do really a hats off to uh, our former chair, uh, Venice Santella, uh, maybe, you know, have, uh, I, I know we have a commemoration here in just a few moments, so, so we could build off of that. Uh, have, you know, happy to take an email from anybody on, on suggestions, uh, folks that worked with them over the past years, and uh, we'll include that in the newsletter. We'll obviously do a welcome uh, to our new officers. Uh, and then something kind of fun that was uh, Chair Kibbe's idea is a commissioner spotlight. 
and I randomly chose Matt Gifford. Uh, he was surprisingly, but I, I'm happy that that he is uh, enthusiastic about doing this. So I'm just going to interview him, and and my intent is to interview uh, all of you, uh, all of us, about uh, you know what kind of drives us to do this work, to spend three hours uh, every month uh, in front of the public here um, doing this volunteer work. So. You know, are you fishing? Are you boating? What what parts of the Harbor Management Commission would you like to become more pro or uh, plan? Would you like to become more prominent? Things like that. Softball questions. Uh, also, thank you to Harbor Master Lavallo. Uh, I will call you a little bit later this week and kind of get you know something down, a short and sweet message to uh, boaters as they start to prepare, uh, as they start to be safe. You know, get up to code with their vessels. Um, you know, we can figure out exactly what to. To message to everybody. A final thing: spring events around Norwalk Harbor. Uh, let's let's think about any maritime focused events, any any kind of training. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, boat licensing training, you know, through the Coast Guard auxiliary, uh, anything like that. Uh, open to suggestions. And I'm trying to get all this done in the next couple of weeks, and certainly want to get this out uh, well ahead of the start of boating season. So, thanks. Any questions for Mike? Like it's great to the the to get with this uh, publication get back in back in action because we've uh, been remiss, which has been largely my fault because I don't know how to do those things. But no questions for Mike. Um, moving right along to Joe Schneerlein and water quality. You're muted, Thank Joe. You. Oh no, you're not now. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Chairman Kitty. Um, we had an interesting month. What we're doing right now is we're finalizing the recommendations that I will get out to city officials April 1st. And I had told everybody if they had any last minute changes to throw in to get them to me. And so far, I haven't gotten any. So we're going to run with what we are all familiar with. Um, the other thing that's that's coming along the pike, Dick Harris did something very interesting along with Louise Washer. And for those of you who don't know Louise, Louise is the chairperson for the Norwalk uh, River Watershed Initiative. And Dick Harris uh, works for Norm Bloom and he's responsible for doing water quality testing. Well, Louise chipped in 2,500 and uh, Bloom's chipped in 2,500 and they bought enough sampling equipment to sample for PFOS. And they went up the Silver Mine River and they went up the Norwalk River just to find what we have for a baseline. And the only place that they found that it was good was at the Groups Reservoir, which is up um, from the Silver Mine River. All the other reservoirs had high levels of PFAS in it. The Silver Mine had high levels of PFAS, and so did the Norwalk River. And they went all the way up to Wilton, where Wilton plans on putting in um, their sites for artificial turf fields. So they wanted a handle. Now, ironically, that was presented at the Norwalk River Watershed Initiative. And the only pushback we got was from Wilton. Uh, the conservation officer said, well, what protocols did you follow? And they followed the protocols established by York um, which is the company they use to run the samples. So um, they said, well, is, is that the correct way to do it? And Dick said, as far as we know, it was the only way because nobody else did it and no one has done the testing. So at least we have a baseline. And he said, well, I, you know, the Wilton gentleman talked to somebody out in Michigan and they said, this is a way you should be doing it. So until government comes up with protocols as to exactly how you're supposed to do it. Um, I think we should take a look at what Dick has. Um, he has it ready and we can probably send some of that out shortly if any of you are interested. Um, the yeah. other thing. Yeah, just a quick question on your testing. Uh, who, who, who was the company that did the testing again? York. York. Was it HPLC? Uh, well, they didn't do they did, they ran the test, Dick did the collection. No, no. What procedures did they use for identifying PFAS and PFOS? I don't know. 
Right. Now, because that's that's probably the type of question that the Wilton representative probably wanted to know. Well, you know? he he was not happy with the fact that they didn't provide a suit for him to go out in that was self-contained and um, all kinds of safeguards as far as any particles falling off of them. No. What, York, what York did- don't, don't go outside to begin with, you know, because it's, 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 it's everywhere. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. what York did- Walk the high school them. field, you'll know it. If, if, you know, has he ever been to a high school field with, with the AstroTurf? Well, they did not test the fields. I'm talking about this one fellow that was that was discussing the issue. No, no. He's, he's never been to a high school field with astroturf, huh? In well, I don't know that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. And and if he's in Wilton, Wilton has an astroturf and a football field. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so here, the fellow is just sort of contradiction. Is a contradiction of terms here. If he, if he wanted a, a safeguard, he should wear one when he goes to a football. Uh, oh, absolutely. So anyway, that's beside the point. Okay. Yeah, so that is that is where we are with that, and we're going to hopefully finish off. Um, Diane Larcello had put together uh, recommendations for the MS four to be passed on to uh, Department of Public Works, and we're going to finish that off at the next meeting. Hmm. Any it, questions? Yeah, it's just worth an article maybe to present to to uh, to Mike. In the newsletter, I mean, as a as a FYI, or is this too early to uh, to call attention? The reason why I say that, Joe, is that if you look at if you look at the scientific literature in the past two years, the number of articles that have come out on PFAS has been staggering. Yes, and I and agree. I, I you know if you go to, if you go to PubMed and you look up PFAS and you look at the years of of publications of data, you'll start seeing that probably as of maybe 2019, 2018. There was a marked surge of, and they're all under kind of endocrine disruptors. You know, they, they fall under that that category right there. So, so there, there's, there's, we've probably reached just the tip of the iceberg right now. Oh, so, well, John. Yeah, excuse you, me. John, Sorry, you, you, may shoot, you, you may shoot me for this. We're kind of getting a, over my head here. Could we, could you take this offline, perhaps? Okay. Sorry, sorry, sir. It just kind um, of, uh, it just, well, I, I did recommend to any group, uh, and especially the initiative, that if anybody wanted a lesson on PFOS, to contact John, because he would be a great one to share with the impact it has on human bodies. Um, and I hope you don't mind, John, but I, I trust your judgment there very, very much. You've been in the industry for a long time. And I'm done. That's it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it, you know, it's 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 really late. Uh, I I I'm a little lucky to recognize Dennis when he's not on the call. Uh, so I think that I'd like to find a better way to do that without him being here. Um, and uh, Laurie, I don't know if we might if we postpone this your discussion till till next meeting. Is that no? It's okay totally fine. Yep. It's getting it's getting a little little late for new business. Anybody else have new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded. What a sec second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night. Thank you Good very night. much for your time. <laughs>